everybody. Let's call this meeting to order. It is 631. So thanks everybody for joining on this uh, this nice Tuesday as we're just commenting on the, the nice weather. And so, um, <clears throat> so uh, first things first, we have administrative items. And so one item I wanted to bring up in front of the committee uh, for the agenda is I, I looked, I, I've been considering the, the committee's feedback in terms of uh, making sure we stick on time and are um, basically respectful of, of committee members' time so we don't stay too late. And, and so trying to plan out how to set the agenda. So one of the items that uh, that I've talked with Mark about is we're going to limit our developer presentations to a maximum of two per meeting. And so my goal is to try and estimate things in terms of time units, roughly 1.5, 1.25 time units per presentation. And so looking at what we have upcoming for these two presentations, I believe that the like from what I see, the second presentation, number two, Taco Bell, they listed out all their modifications. And the good news is, well, good news for the committee in many ways, is all of them are not within the purview of the OTCAC. So the discussion that we will have to make is about the compliance of the vision of the master plan. The 1405 Odenton Road, I don't have a list of modifications. So I can't tell you what is going to be coming up in terms of that presentation. So one of the thoughts I had was, and if the committee would like, we could uh, amend the agenda to reverse the presentations because we have a, a better chance of getting through, I think, the Taco Bell one on time to get more time to 1405 Odenton Road since we don't know what's upcoming with it. So just as a, Jason, a suggestion. As being a presenter for 1405 Odenton Road, um, I think there may be one modification request um, and we don't even know whether it's necessary, um, possibly two. So we'll be just putting it forth, but there are no, no modifications requested at this time time but they will be pointed out two of them okay so um taking that into consideration i'll leave to the committee uh if uh, someone wants to make a motion to leave the agenda as is or if someone wants to make a motion to swap the two presentations uh either one i i leave it to the committee to to go either way i recuse myself mm -hmm. appropriate appreciate that thanks Stuart. I think if we, have the, like uh, if, if we have the the best chance of getting through um, one of them, then I say we go with that one. Right. Well, I think we're going to get through both. It's just a matter of um, in terms of of the discussion overall and my assessment of what the committee tends to talk about. Um, I believe that we have a we have a high probability of getting through the second presentation quickly, just to be very honest. I I, I think the first presentation we're going to have, uh, knowing what the committee likes to talk about, I think there's going to be more discussion. All right, so let's do the quick one first. All right, so is that a motion to have developed yeah, presentation? That's a motion for doing, yeah, doing that. The presentation two first and then have presentation number one second. Okay, is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, I'm going to give it to Brenda. Um, okay, so uh, any objection to the uh, adjusting the agenda to switch the order of the presentations? Okay, hearing no objections, uh, we are going to switch the ordering. So, um, so Mark, if you could make sure that the the presenters know um, that way, I think we're trying to give the most amount of time to presentation one because I think presentation two is going to actually go relatively quickly. Um, and, I, and that that basically means um, uh, I think we we won't have to to hold people as long. All right. So next on our agenda is the um, uh, uh, the meeting minutes for our last meeting in March. Everyone received those over email. Uh, do you have any major corrections or items of concern with the minutes that were passed out? Anyone have any motions to amend the minutes? Hearing none, could I get a motion to approve the minutes? I make a motion that the minutes be approved from last month. Okay, Brenda. Okay, Stuart seconds. All right, any objection to approval of the minutes? Okay, hearing none, uh, then the minutes are approved. All right, so the first item on our agenda, is, our revised agenda is the presentation number two. So the, the uh, Taco Bell that is proposed to be at 1219 Annapolis Road. 
Uh, we received a, a full listing of the modifications with details, as well as a, uh, a, a substantial amount of information about the site. And so, Mark, do we have the presenters? Yeah, so we have Lauren Witten and Connor McManus. And uh, let me know if anybody else needs to be um, promoted to a panelist, Lauren and Connor. Um, let's see. I, I don't know if we can see. I'm looking at the participants oh. right now. If our client here with Southpaw is on or not. Trying to take a look. I, I don't see them on the uh, attendees list right now. Yeah, I do. Uh, Dan Pellisier, um, and Kevin Savage in the attendees list. Okay. Um, and David Panella as well, please. <clears throat> okay. Great. Thank you very much. Okay. So once all three of those are promoted, then I will turn it over to whomever is going to be presenting. Take it away, Lauren. All right. Um, hello. I let me share my screen because I think a visual could be helpful. Um, All right. Is everyone able to see the screen? I can see the that you are presenting uh, your site. Okay. Awesome. Um, all right. So um, my name is Lauren Whitten and um, Connor, who was just speaking. We are with Dynamic Engineering. Um, as you mentioned, Kevin Savage is also with Dynamic um, on the traffic side. And then um, Dan and Dave are the developer. Um, so the this project proposed is there's a current um, BB&T bank existing on the site. Um, it's currently vacant with a large asphalt parking lot. And the goal of the project will be to redevelop the site for a proposed Taco Bell with a single lane drive through and associated parking and um, pedestrian facilities. Um, the existing site is 0.66 acres um, and the zoning district is OTCE, um, the East Odenton Village Mix. Um, it was formerly identified as the OEOD East Odenton um, prior to the March 29th um, zoning code revisions and master plan revisions. Um, so this zone uh, centers along the commercial corridor for Annapolis Road 175 um, to next to the core and historic districts. Um, the corridor is lined with local services and building uh, businesses and medical office businesses. Um, so we feel that the commercial restaurant fits nicely into that um, corridor. And um, based off the new master plan, this zone is continued to be a business center for the community. Um, so for the adjacent uses, um, there's an adjacent office building here and a office building over here as well on each on the east and west sides of the property. Um, to the south, it is a an existing um, assisted living facility and um, all of which are within also the East Odenton Village Mix Zone. Um, the facility to the south, the assisted living, is currently proposing um, some additions, uh, about six bedrooms um, to the side that Mark informed us of, um, but we don't anticipate that our site will have any impact on their improvements. Um, Across the street of Annapolis Road, there are existing residential townhomes as well. And um, Annapolis Road is an SHA under SHA jurisdiction. Um, so the number of um, the floor area for the proposed Taco Bell is anticipated to be 1,965 square feet, uh, providing 28 patron seating interior to the building and then um, many of the 
patrons will be utilizing the drive through as well. Um, so for the, in this zone, per the Anne Arundel County Mass or Zoning Code, uh, there is one required parking space per every three seats or one space per every 200 square feet of floor area, whichever is greater. Um, in this case, it ends up being 10 required either way, requir no matter if it's seats or floor area. Um, we are proposing 14 parking spaces, um, which is a reduction from the uh, existing 30 parking spaces on site. Um, for site access, we have a two-way entrance off of um, Annapolis Road. The existing site currently has two ac access points, um, so we are maintaining those uh, in proposed conditions, with uh, the one on the left being a two-way access uh, to provide um, for the drive-through as well as the parking, and then looping around this becomes a one-way drive aisle and then a exit only for this proposed access um and existing conditions they're both two-way so the um loading there's no required loading for um loading spaces dedicated uh for the site um, but loading will occur during off hours and be within the drive through bypass lane um, as to not impede regular, regularly, regularly scheduled patrons um, throughout the business day. Um, this, based off the zoning code, it's required to be 12 feet by 30 feet for loading, um, which this bypass lane is currently uh, 15 feet wide and provide sufficient room for that. Uh, bicycle parking uh, based off of the new code uh, dated uh, March 29th requires one space for every 20 vehicle parking spaces uh, with a maximum of 10 spaces. And the so one is work required for the site and we are currently proposing four parking, four bicycle parking spaces um, that are up here on the um, top left corner of the building, which provides the most access to the public right away. Um, for pedestrian uh, accessibility, we are proposing a, a sidewalk along the, uh, along Napolis Road, the frontage. Uh, now they actually have, um, we have learned that there is a federal aid project underway. Uh, they expect approval in May of this year um, to provide, so the state will provide a new public sidewalk along the south southern side of Annapolis Road um, along the majority of this, which includes our frontage. Uh, now, I've included a snippet of that so you can kind of see our existing site uh, and the proposed sidewalk along the curb line here. Um, so we will be updating our plans to incorporate this state installed public sidewalk. Um, but for right now, we were already anticipating on showing one, so or pro proposing one. So either way, there will be a public sidewalk along the frontage. And we are proposing a wide sidewalk from the proposed Taco Bell to the right of way. Um, which also the wider sidewalk provides additional space for shared bicyclists and pedestrians. So for the uh, drive aisles, I already touched on this, but the for circulation, Anne Arundel County requires 15 feet for one way, uh, which we are providing for the one way around circulation for the site. Um, two way drive aisles are required 24 feet wide, we are providing 26 foot, uh, or I'm sorry, 25 feet um, for the entrance and then 26 foot through the parking lot. Um, fire department access requires the 20 foot minimum um, lane width, which we've already been coordinating with the fire marshal um, and received um, his feedback. So the site 
provides full accessibility for the fire department access as shown, um, including height and um, height restrictions with the building canopy over the service window and any other drive-through um, item, which is the menu board, the order canopy and the clearance bar. For uh, traffic circulation, we are providing uh, a crash enclosure on the towards the rear of the site where it's less visible from the right of way. This will be a combined crash and recycle enclosure um, and is will be accessible for the Anne Arundel County front loading uh, trash truck. Um, and then the as noted before for the deliveries, a WB50 uh, trailer will be utilized for the off hour deliveries, which the site can also accommodate as shown. Um, the drive through for the Taco Bell will provide nine car, uh, a sufficient room for nine cars uh, stacking. Um, and this as shown, it's laid out to not impede other uh, vehicles traversing the site. Um, for, um, and then traffic mitigation, Kevin, if you wanna touch on that slightly. Sure, thanks Lauren. So our office had the opportunity to prepare a, a transportation impact study for this proposed development. Um, we had gone through the scoping process with the county and also had some preliminary discussions with the State Highway Administration, specifically regarding the proposed access points. Um, as Lauren had mentioned, there's, there's currently two full movement driveways along Annapolis Road. The, as part of this development, the, the western driveway will remain full movement, but the eastern driveway is limited it to egress only. Uh, so as part of that TIS, we reviewed not only the proposed site driveways, but the adjacent signal to the west with um, Piney Orchard Road, the adjacent signal to the east with the Odenton Shopping Center and Dairy Queen, as well as the roundabout a little bit further east with Appington Station Road. And what's unique about this type of use is uh, fast food uses specifically generate a lot of what we call in the, in the, the traffic world pass-by traffic, um, which essentially is traffic already on the roadway network, already on Annapolis Road. That's passing the site, you know, stopping to the restaurant to grab and continue on their way. So number of new trips generated by a, a use such as this is, is fairly limited. Um, but obviously all of that's, you know, incorporated into the TIS, which will ultimately be reviewed and uh, require approval from both the county and SHA. So uh, some of our conclusions in that report, uh, we no noted minimal changes in operation uh, at the adjacent intersections and the site driveways, we anticipate they'll operate at good level service. So we didn't notice, uh, you know, any, any capacity concern as part of our review uh, within the TIS. Thanks, Kevin. So for uh, landscaping and landscaping buffers and outdoor seating and furniture, we have our uh, conceptual landscape plan as well. Um, for standards for drive-through and fast food establishments in the Anne Arundel County Landscape Manual, um, as noted in the updated master plan, do not apply um, when in the Odenton Town Center. However, we uh, have been have laid out some landscape buffers that uh, are able to comply to provide the maximum amount of screening. Um, so as you can see, we have landscape buffers along the perimeter in the south adjacent to the residential use. Um, we show a 15 foot class A landscape buffer. Um, however, our proposed improvements are set back even further. Uh, there is an existing wooded area back uh, at the rear of the site, which the proposed development is planning to maintain entirely, um, which we will not be touching. So the uh, proposed curb, as you see here, is pushed up. Um, we limited our um, LOD, the limits of disturbance for the property um, as such to maintain that wooded area. Um, so this uh, densely wooded will provide sufficient screening for the assisted living facility to the south on the east and the um, 
west sides, a 10 foot buffer, landscaping buffer is required. And um, so as shown here with the one way drive aisle and then the parking area on the left um, are able to accommodate that as well as the required planning units for those uh, class A buffers. Um, and then on the front of the site along Annapolis Road, a uh, 15 foot class A buffer is also provided uh, uh, for the ad adjacent uh, Annapolis Road. According to the master plan, the, um, the site is to comply with the class A buffer for the minor arterial road, which Annapolis Road is, um, and the all required planning units are provided as well. Um, we are providing currently two, um, or sorry, four street trees in the right of way, um, according to the street tree standards of the landscape manual. Um, and obviously the, the street trees and required planning units will be updated for the state uh, federal aid project uh, when we incorporate the sidewalk along there, but we don't anticipate any um, modifications required on that end for the street trees. Um, we are going to be able to uh, still accommodate all required landscaping um, standards. Um, as you can see here in green, we do show the site distance triangle for the two uh, right out onto Annapolis Road and the street trees have been set back accordingly as not to impede with the required site distance triangle. Um, for the urban street tree streetscape standards, one bench is required uh, and is provided along the frontage as well as one waste bin, uh, which is provided by the building over here. Um, the interior landscaping standards um, for a parking lot less than 5,000 square feet, interior landscaping standards are not required. Um, for, and this, including drive aisles, the parking lot area is roughly 4,256 square feet. Um, and we will dive some more into those requirements shortly. Um, for the dumpsters, for the dumpster enclosure, we are able to provide the required number of uh, class A screening planting units uh, along the three sides of the enclosure. And, um, we are also um, providing some additional landscaping around the signs for the uh, menu board and order point for the drive-through. Uh, so for building height and setback, um, the building height is required to be, there's no minimum requirement for a site less than two acres. However, there's a maximum requirement of um, 50 feet in height, the proposed building will be 24 feet in height up to the uh, height of the tower, um, which is located at the front of the building. Um, front yard, um, there is a zero foot minimum building setback with a 45 foot um, maximum building setback line, which this building is pushed forward um, to accommodate that uh, maximum setback line, and then for rear and side yards, there are no uh, building setback requirements. Uh, for activity space and green areas, the existing site is roughly 76% uh, impervious today with the existing bank and the 30 space parking lot. In proposed conditions, we are going to be reducing that to roughly 50 to 55% uh, percent impervious. Um, for stormwater management and storm drain, we have currently proposed two microbioretention areas. Um, we did receive uh, recently some our geotechnical investigation results, which did show a higher groundwater table. Um, so we are still looking into other facilities that are able to accommodate that high seasonal groundwater, um, but full stormwater management for the site will be provided. Um, which in existing conditions, no stormwater management is provided today. So we anticipate on improving the uh, current conditions in 
between the reduced impervious coverage and the stormwater management. Uh, for environmental features, uh, the, the environmental consultant did perform a cursory site investigation and did not show, um, did not locate any indication of wetlands, specimen trees, forests, or any other environmental features on the site. The site is located in uh, zone X, which is an area of minimal flood hazard outside of the 0.2% chance annual chance floodplain uh, per the FEMA flood insurance rate map. Um, for the Taco Bell, we are providing some signage on site. Um, the signage will be uh, will be showing based off of the Anne Arundel County Code requirements of signage on no more than three facades. We will be providing signage on the front facade, the uh, eastern and the western facades. Um, so this will be our Taco Bell Tower um, with signage on either side and then some signage over the main door canopy. Um, and I can actually pull up some architectural elevations to help with um, that in a moment. Um, we are proposing a freestanding sign. Um, so this is the tower in which I was um, referring to. So you'll see the Taco Bell swinging bell on either side of the tower with the Taco Bell. Um, um, it's, it's not popping up for some reason. Oh, no. Unless it's just me. <clears throat> um, the architecturals. <clears throat> yeah. Shoot. Um, Maybe when you did the share screen, it was the uh, the PDF rather than the, the screen. Yeah. I apologize, everyone. Um, okay, is everyone able to see this? Yep. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so for the uh, Taco Bell Tower, this is the tower I was referring to where the uh, 24 foot height uh, reaches and we show the swinging bell taco bell uh, logo sign on the northern and uh, eastern sides of the tower um, so you can see the north side of the building along with the drive through um, and then here we see the main entrance with the swinging bell sign on this facade um, and the parking along the front main entrance um, here is a rendering of the drive through side with the order window. And then you can see the rear of the building, which nobody will really see from the right of way. And then um, another view of the main entrance um, with an employee service door as well. Um, and some artwork on the building here in panels. Um, I'm going to share back the PDF. Okay. Um, is everyone able to see the site plan again? Yep. And I, I just want to let you know you have 10 minutes left at most. Okay. Thank you. Um, I will be wrapping up shortly. Um, so for the uh, signage, we are also providing a freestanding monument sign. Um, there is an existing monument sign in present day for the uh, bank. We are proposing to maintain the full base um, and simply just replace the sign portion with the Taco Bell sign. Um, this will be a signage variance for the zoning code as um, the Annapolis, or sorry, the Anne Arundel County Code does not require, does not permit a uh, pylon or pole signs. However, this is an existing sign um, in present day. So we are, will be requesting a variance for that. Um, and then these are just some details for the other signs. In addition to, we have the menu board sign um, and then an order point and a clearance bar. Um, for lighting, the light will be um, illuminated with some shades uh, to 
direct onto the site and provide some shielding from glaring onto the right of way, um, as well as to the adjacent properties, which uh, the landscaping will also help with. Um, Existing utilities will be connecting into the public right of way in Annapolis Road, water, gas, sewer, storm drain, et cetera. Um, for additional elements, there's no uh, historic preservation design aspects um, as this is not a historic site. Um, and then on to the modification. Um, Oh, and then this is also a preliminary rendering of our site. You can see the Taco Bell, the drive through the parking um, bench, trash location, um, existing wooded areas and such. So for the modifications, we will be having two modifications um, as uh, noted prior to the start of our presentation, uh, our sign variants and our two modifications are not to the Odenton Master Plan, they are to the Anne Arundel County Code, um, but we are presenting our modifications and variances here um, to also comply with Anne Arundel County Code community meeting requirements. Um, so the modifications requested are um, relief from the requirement to provide a five foot planting area between the face of the building and the face of curb um, on the parking edge on the west side of the building, and then additionally, relief is requested from the requirement to provide foundation planting for 50% of the building facade. Um, so currently we are showing about 35% um, of the building facade is to be planted um, on this side and then this side. Um, unfortunately, due to the impacts um, of expanding the site east and west to provide the additional foundation plantings and park and planting between the parking and the building, um, it would require some additional variances for impacts to the rear or the side la landscape buffers. Um, so relief is requested. With those, um, we propose to do the um, these modifications through the uh, incentive program. And so the request um, in order to accommodate these um, require these two landscaping requirements for the foundation planting and the parking, um, we will be providing some proffers in accordance with the Odenton Master Plan Appendix E. Um, one of these proffers is the transit and parking proffer um, to provide additional bike parking spaces. So as previously mentioned, the site is only required to provide one parking, one bike parking space. Um, and with this, we are going to be increasing the provided to four bike parking spaces. Um, and as noted, it's in a location that's convenient for the uh, public use um, for the sidewalk along the Annapolis Road right of way. Um, the additional uh, proffer will be a conservation proffer uh, for green areas above the amount required by the county code. Um, as previously mentioned, we are going to be reducing the impervious cover from existing conditions from 76% to 55%. Um, and to maximize the green areas uh, provided on site. Um, and additionally limiting parking from the 30 existing spaces down to 14 spaces uh, to encourage a pedestrian friendly um, environment for the community. Um, and for um, the, an additional uh, proffer will be to exceed the uh, surface parking landscaping standards of the county manual. Um, and as noted previously, the parking lot is less than 5,000 square feet, including the drive aisle, which does not require any interior parking landscaping. However, um, we, since because we are not able to provide the full foundation plantings, we will be providing additional landscaping um, around the perimeter of the parking lot uh, to enhance the landscaping and uh, greenery on site. 
So in addition, we are uh, requesting a modification to uh, eliminate the preliminary plan review per section 17-2-108 of the Anne Arundel County Code. Um, this relief is requested to combine the site development plan and the preliminary plan reviews to streamline the review process and allow for a fast track to permitting. Um, so last but not least, um, we would like to note some um, consistency with the goals, policies, and strategies of the Odenton Town Center Master Plan Chapter 4 of the Implementation Framework um, and how the project relates to those sections. Um, section B, E, dot, one, dot, one, dot F um, encourages pedestrian-oriented uses um, and Section BE 11H, create walkable block sizes, uh, more continuous streetscape with the ground floor retail and wide sidewalk to allow for increased bicycle and pedestrian mobility for outdoor seating. Um, as noted, we are providing the uh, widened sidewalk. This is about an eight foot wide sidewalk um, to encourage pedestrian um, oriented uses um, and increase bicycle mobility. Um, section BE11P require review to review the requirements of the county landscape manual and make recommendations specific to the OTC enhanced landscaping tree canopy and reduced impervious surfaces. As previously mentioned, um, we are reducing the impervious surfaces and increasing the landscaping provided around the parking lot. Um, encourage the redevelopment of surface parking lots into usable building space, a community amenity or green space per section BE11Q. Um, a lot of these um, sections are very similar, but um, section BE11S support infill development and the adaptive use reuse of buildings. Um, section BE44D finished design and construction of a sidewalk along the eastbound lane of Annapolis Road, um, section BE57H, incent identify incentives to retrofit existing parks, parking and access areas. Um, this is once again the um, tied to our reduction of the 30 parking spaces to 14. Um, section HE21B, uh, work with par partners to market resources and attractive private sector companies to locate in the OTC. Uh, so currently there's no Taco Bells located in the Odenton Town Center. Um, this project would establish a nationally known, respected and enjoyed brand in the Odenton Town Center and would further strengthen and diversify the local economy along this commercial corridor. Um, section HE21C, assist private developers in attracting high quality businesses. Um, to, and as previously mentioned, um, this will be further diversifying the site um, and provide a nice lunch spot for those working in the office buildings to the east and to the west of the site. Um, this would further diversify the tax base, increase the number of jobs, as well as increase the restaurant options for residents of the Odenton Town Center. And lastly, uh, section HE21H, identify gaps in employment for Odenton residents and seek to support workers, workforce development programs that could fill those gaps. Um, the applicant is proposing to introduce a new workforce option to the local economy. Um, and this project will increase the number of high quality jobs for Odenton residents. Um, I believe that is it. Um, Connor, feel free to chime in if you feel that I missed anything important. <laughs> I don't think I have anything to add. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. So I'd like to open to the committee for questions. So um, any committee members have any questions or comments? I do. This is Stuart. How y'all doing? Thank you for the uh, presentation. Pretty detailed. Um, Taco Bell is about the only fast food I eat, and it's terrible that's going to be in walking distance from my office. So, um, with that said, um, I am intimately familiar with the site. Um, and a couple comments here. First of all, your variances are negligible. I don't even think they should even require anything, but thank you for the proffers and everything kind of ridiculous. Um, parking modification, I'm somewhat concerned about. Um, 
and, and more of my concern um, comes, well, a couple of things. Are there, is this a 24 hour Taco Bell? And one of my reasons for asking and concern is I'm still concerned about the buffer from the assisted living folks, um, whether there would be a fence there or additional landscaping. Um, and um, that element, I know that the property raises up on a higher point. So it may very well be looking down on that rather than the woods, but I'll take a closer look tomorrow. Um, Cause honestly, that particular point I didn't look at. Um, I'm concerned about the ingress egress and you got two way, both ways. And the guy takes a right hand turn from the parking lot entrance leaving. And then the roundabout around the drive through, he takes a left hand turn at the same time. Um, rushing out to beat a car is done all the time, and I'm, I'm really concerned about that. I wouldn't be concerned so much if it was in one way and out the other, and, and you do have that that point where people can go through and, and bypass the, the drive-through, and I just think that would make a much safer situation. Um, um, other than that, honestly, I you know, it's a small site. Um, and, and there's not a whole lot you can do, um, you know, again, with the assisted living or going to a, from a quiet use to a busy, noisy use, um, you know, trash receptacles right below them, et cetera. And I, I'm, again, I'm not necessarily saying that's a bad thing. Um, you know, the, the commercial that is the commercial district, um, everybody needs to understand that when they buy a property and what could or couldn't possibly go there. It's an allowable use. It's a necessary use in the area with the lack of food. Um, and um, that's it. So like I said, I, I think for a difficult site, really good job. I'm just concerned about the ingress, egress. And other than that, I don't really have many concerns. You know, Good luck and I hope I'm meeting there soon. Thank you. Thanks, Stuart. Uh, did you have an answer to this question about, is it a 24 hour uh, business? Yes. Or is it only uh, business sorry. Um, I, I, can, I can answer sorry, that. Yeah. Uh, no, it will not be 24 hours. And who might you be? Uh, I, I'm sorry. I'm David Pinnell, the uh, VP of development for um, the, the Taco Bell franchisee. So we'll be the owner operator of the property. And do you have others in the area? Uh, we do. I think Dan, you're on the on the line as well from a real estate perspective. What's our yeah. you know what our closest what store your footprint is? Uh, yeah. So we operate a total of 36 Taco Bells uh, in the uh, Maryland, Delaware, and Virginia uh, market. Okay. In close proximity to this. Okay, that that's important. Great. Thank you. Sure. Great, thank you. Any other questions or comments from the committee members? I was going to say I did have um, one response to the, I guess, landscaping on the rear of the site. Um, I can share my screen here so that you can see. Um, are you guys able to see this? Yeah, that's the yeah, I, and again, my concern is that that building is going to raise 20 feet and then the tower doesn't matter. Forget about the tower in the front at 24 feet. So your roof line's at 20 feet and that building right there is only at 12 feet maximum. You know, maybe, maybe another foot. So that's that's my only concern. I see that big tree and the, and the green, th those evergreens are going to grow up. Yeah, I, I think that's okay. okay. I think that's okay. I, the, you know, again, the only thing I would be concerned about um, is, is maybe a fence back there to discourage folks from going through those trees, um, you know, up into that property. But I, I don't think it's mandatory. I'm just making a suggestion. I'm just trying to help those people behind be comfortable. I, Stuart, I I think there is a fence actually on the other side of those trees. From what I can remember, I was I was walking around yeah. the site today, and there I know is. it's up. Up an embankment, and there's a fence at the top. I'm yeah, there's a metal fence there at the top of the embankment, so that might be sufficient. So, just a comment. That that's all. I, I don't. I think it's good to go from my perspective. 
Right. That I. So the question though is, uh, who owns the fence? Right. Do you know if if you own that fence, or if that's the if the fence is owned by the neighboring property? The fence is on the neighboring property. Um, okay. Per our site survey, um, you can see this kind of dashed line with the boxes here is the fence along that property line. So it is on their site. Okay. All right, uh, do any other committee members have uh, comments or questions or feedback? Yeah, Jason, this is Eric. I had a, a question. Uh, also, thank you for the presentation. Um, yeah, I think you guys did a great job um, with your site plan, but I did have a question about parking. Um, and you seem to met all the requirements, but uh, wondering with employee parking, um, <laughs> And your customers, are those 14 spaces going to be enough? Eric, what we've seen in the in the fast food industry, specifically over the past couple of years, you know, especially post-COVID, is a lot of a lot of the customer base is is driven to the drive through. So, you know, a large percentage of traffic is is really utilizing that drive through. So from you know our review of the site, we feel that that 14 spaces are sufficient, and you know based on the code, it meets both the square footage and the seat requirement for spaces. I think 10 were required in both cases, and 14 are provided here. So you know we're we're above and beyond that you know code requirement, and and based on our review of the site, we think it's sufficient to support the use. Yeah, okay. and and from a from an operator standpoint, um, roughly. 85 to 87% of our business goes through the drive-through, which is, is a very significant amount. Um, with regards to employees, um, obviously we we encourage and, and mandate that our employees park as far away from the front door as possible. But I think, and this might just be an assumption on my part, but I think we actually in the market do have a fair number of employees that take advantage of public transportation to get to work. So, you know, we may have X number of employees working in the restaurant at any one time, but it doesn't mean that they all drove there. Yeah. I have a, a comment, Dan. You had just mentioned that 85% of the your, of the people go through the drive through Is nine cars, because you're, um, I think what's the name, Sharon mentioned, you have space for nine cars. Is that really sufficient? Uh, what we and found... Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say what we found in the market is that it is. Um, we obviously we try to maximize the 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 stacking room um, in in every location that we uh, that we propose and that we have today. Um, but in general, yeah, we we feel like that is um, that is sufficient. Now that might be meeting what we would consider our minimum. I think we're actually exceeding right. what the Taco Bell brand requires as their minimum. But um, but yeah, I, we feel we feel very comfortable with it. Yeah, and I just mentioned that because you have another store, maybe about two miles down the road or so, in the Ridgeway, and sometimes that line gets fairly long. So that's my concern. Yes. Sure. Yeah, and, and to elaborate a little bit more on what Dan said, this is our new prototype building, and and to be honest with you, the efficiencies inside the building, it's all built around speed, the service, the drive-through, like Dan says, it's 80 to 87% of our business there. So so with this new building and the, and the equipment efficiencies, it's critical that we move those cars. And, and that's why we have the menu board strategically place so many cars back so we maximize uh, that, 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 so there's no okay. wait time in between. And then we feel like three to four cars beyond, beyond the, the ordering point is more than sufficient because we're moving those cars through uh, so quickly. And then they're taking their food off premises to consume. Right, yeah, okay. Dan, Actually, I, I have a question to follow that one up uh, in regards to the, the traffic. Um, yeah, th that's for the store, but what about how that's going to affect the traffic on the main road there? Because um, you're going to be at the mercy of those lights and the traffic there at any time of day. And you have don't really have control over that. How's that going to affect it? Kevin, would you have any kind of, uh, any kind of input regarding that? Yeah, so we reviewed both driveways and specifically, you know, the, the performed a capacity analysis of those driveways for for the transit site. We didn't identify any operational concerns. You know that we we found they operated with good levels of service and uh, a minimal delay. 
So that'll have to get reviewed by the state and the county. But from from our port, we are we did not identify any you know sort of operational concern with that driveway. Okay. Colette, do you have your hand up? I do. Yes. Thank you. Um, thank you very much for the presentation. Um, I was also interested in understanding a little bit more about the parking. Um, I mean, honestly, for TODs, I wish we had parking maximums and not parking minimums. So I am actually in favor of less parking spaces. And if that's what is required to meet some of the concerns um, of my committee colleagues in terms of the ingress and egress, um, or also for the landscaping, I would absolutely be in favor of that. Um, especially given all of the arguments you have yourself just listed <laughs> around how um, the majority of the business is done through the drive through. Um, and then in regarding the sign, I know that's not really the committee's um, job, but as a community member, I am actually curious whether the sign would be in the way of the sidewalk that is being built. Um, and I personally would don't think that you guys need the sign. It's an old sign and I would probably just take it down because I think it would actually detract from the new look that you all are planning there, uh, which looks really nice, by the way. I especially like the uh, purple flowers in the rendering. <laughs> uh, so that was it. Those are my comments. All right, any other comments or feedback from committee members? All right, seeing none, I will give my comments now. So um, uh, number one, I wanted to give you some kudos on the quality of this package. So uh, as you've you've highlighted that um, the county just released, uh, just recently approved a new master plan. And one of the new additions to the question set was, do you believe that you are, are meeting the vision of the master plan and tell us why? And, and so the question is purposefully vague because I'll be honest, you're the first project to run through answering that question. And I figured we would kind of rescope it as we as we move along because the committee, one of the, the items we have to have in our letter is, does this project meet the vision of the master plan? And so I think it's only fair for us to ask you that question and you can basically convey to us, do you believe you are or not? So so I wanted to commend you on on kind of taking that first leap and actually giving us a, a comprehensive package of how you feel you're, you're, you're meeting the vision of the master plan because that gives the committee a lot of insight into um, possibly ways that we can shape this discussion in the future for other developers. Uh, and so number two, just some comments on the site itself. So a uh, great overall package. Uh, I echo Stuart's concern about the ingress egress on the east side. I, I do think that it would be worthwhile for you to look at that making an, e an ingress only and just having a singular loop just because of the safety issue. I think he is he's raising a 100% valid point of someone turning left on that, that west exit at the same time someone is trying to turn in to the entrance, and that does create a, a safety hazard, whereas you have a bit of a delay there because you have that buffer between the two exit points. And so, so you you are making 175 a little bit safer because of that if you only have that as an ingress point. So I, I would um, sustain Stuart's concern there. I think that is that is 100% valid, and uh, I would encourage you to take a look at that. Um, number two, in terms of the location of your handicapped parking spaces, do you believe that there is a concern where the handicapped any handicapped vehicles that are parked in those spaces are going to be blocked by that traffic line. I have seen this in other drive-throughs in the Maryland area where the spaces that are right up against that entrance to the drive-through often get blocked. And so you put your handicapped spaces there, which means the handicap, any car that requires handicapped parking is going to be more likely to be blocked by that, that, that traffic line. And it will be harder for them to get in and out of your facility which I don't know if that creates any, any type of consequence uh, from a legal perspective. So just something to keep an eye on. And I don't know if that's something you've encountered in other businesses, areas that you've had where those, those spaces are most impacted. Uh, I'll let you, let you comment on that um, after I complete. Uh, so next, in terms of the sidewalk connection, uh, I think it's, uh, again, I'm, I'm glad that you, you uh, heard the, the plan for how the sidewalk is going to be installed. And it's great that you're looking at modifying your site there. I think the, the west side is going to be the hardest one for you to link to. So the more you can link to that actual plan and not have to worry about that, that giant basically swale, that storm drain management right up against 175, the better. Um, but, but that full connectivity is fantastic. So, so great job there. I do think that this is going to have to factor into the committee's plans overall in terms of safety of crossings for Maryland 175. 
because as you noted on the north side of the road, there is a residential community. It is a super easy walk for all of those residents now to cross 175 and get to Taco Bell without driving, which is fantastic for those residents. Very bad since we do not have good safety crossings there. So I think that's something that we have to be aware of for the future that that we are we're making good pedestrian friendly areas here. And I, I love how you focused on that. But we're not making 175 safer to cross. And I think that's that's a future problem that we're going to have to deal with. Uh, and then lastly, when I was visiting the site today, I noted that the power and data lines hang really, really low over the entrance. So do you have a plan to work with BG&E to make sure that that any trucks that you have moving in and out, um, again, this is not in the purview of the committee, it's more just the note that I made on the site, that make sure that those, those are at the proper height because they seem to be very, very low right now. And you can even see them on your picture of that sign. Um, that uh, you can clearly see that the lines are are like right there. They're they are not high. They're, they're hanging low. So just watch out for those whenever you're doing your redevelopment. Um, but the sheer fact that you've decreased the percentage of the um, impermeable space, you've added a lot more greenery. I mean, it just I do think that you have you have done a great job with with how you've you've arranged this site overall. And um, uh, so I just wanted to give you kudos on that. So those were all of the comments that I had. Hey Jason, I, you know I'm working with state highways on on the sidewalk plan, and and also um, requested them um, to do a warrant study to see where the crossings are are supposed to be, as well as the traffic signals. And um, let's be totally honest: there won't be a crossing for every business across the street and a crosswalk. Okay, so right. that's just not going to happen. And we can't control whether there's a crosswalk there or not somebody's going to go to the shortest pool of resistance. Okay, now that, I'm not saying it shouldn't be done. I'm just saying that's the reality of it. So, you know, this area of Odin is just about done. And that's why maybe, um, you know, that's why I'm working with state highways to see where, okay, there's not going to be much more development on this stretch of the road. Let's see where it makes sense to put some crosswalks. So I'll continue mm -hmm. to work with them. No, absolutely. It's more of just a comment for the committee to to make sure we keep this on our radar. As 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 we are encouraging pedestrian friendly businesses, we need to keep pushing the county and the state for a pedestrian friendly Maryland one seventy five. So those are all my comments. I don't know if you have any feedback to that. Um, if so, great. If not, that's also perfectly fine. We'll open to the public. Just quickly chime in on the handicap locations. That that is something we thought about and and just based on where the door is located and how you have to depress the curb it's it's either there or it's closer to the entrance um but we will have further discussions and just kind of make sure we're thinking through all of this um but but based on you know some of the data they have we're fairly comfortable about the queue length being um about nine on on the peak peak side so um that that was kind of our thinking originally but we will definitely uh discuss further thank you yeah, and, and with regards to the uh, the traffic circulation and your concerns about uh, the the two way um, vehicular uh, action at the the main entrance, we'll take a look at that as well, and we'll discuss that to see if there's anything that we can do. Great, thank you. I'm sorry, I have one more quick question here. While you have the screen up, is that blue line where the original sign currently is? Yes, so this is the existing um, sign and the, so this is that existing sidewalk that we are just kind of proposing to, so we are proposing to kind of curve around it to maintain that existing pole. Um, and then if you see here, the, the federal aid project is actually proposing to bring it up to along the curb line. So mm -hmm. either way, um, it won't have any impacts to the existing sign. But you anticipate building the sidewalk? So, so what this, uh, we were anticipating on proposing and building it ourselves. Um, and then we were just informed um, recently that this is actually part of the federal aid project. Yeah. So then the state will be um, constructing the sidewalk. Um, and I know it was previously mentioned about this existing channel. So we're happy to see that the, the state had some plans uh, to kind of mitigate that and build around it. So, um, cause it is a tough area over here, but whether it's 
constructed by us or the state. Um, we're still unsure of the timing for the state project, but um, I'm sure it's going to take significantly longer than your project. Yeah, so um, I don't so know. I'm not, Colette, I'm not sure anymore. It, it's really I, neck and neck 10 <laughs> years from now. Well, my only concern is with the sign there, especially for folks in wheelchairs or with strollers, having any kind of an extra curve in there is is difficult. And then with a the sign in the way, um, I know that's really not the purview of the committee, but as a as a resident, I would just take it down. Honestly. Thank yeah, you. And, just, and we have um, looked into the ADA uh, compliancy, so um, but we will take that into consideration. Thank you. Okay, I want to keep us moving. So uh, we have two members of the community who have indicated they want to uh, provide comment or question. So uh, David Lewis. Yes, I'm, am I live? <laughs> you are, we can hear you. Okay, good. Um, I guess my camera is not on. I guess I guess it doesn't do my camera. Huh? Um, so uh, I'm David Lewis. I, I live at 533 Oakton Road, which is the opposite side of 175. Um, uh, just a couple of things. Uh, well, my my first question, I think I think it kind of answered. Uh, th this implies you're going to completely demolish the bank building, and and this is a brand new build. I, I, I think I think that's obvious from from what I hear there. Um, um, there, there was some drilling on site within the last month. Was that part of the groundwater test that you were talking about earlier? Yeah, that was uh, th that was for the uh, the geotechnical uh, and groundwater testing that we were performing. Okay. Um, the the third thing I have, I, 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 I I'm, I'm going to echo the ingress egress concerns. Uh, uh, living in that area, I can tell you that the, the crash frequency at Oakton in 175 is is already. <clears throat> probably unacceptable and, and we don't want to add to that problem. So I would I would I would agree with 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 both Stuart and Jason's comments that maybe maybe one of those paths go in and the other one come out. And you know if you're if you're coming out of the parking spot you go around because you, you you made a dual path around that. Um, I'd also echo the comment on the sign. Uh, your your picture was pretty beautiful, but I think the last time I drove by that that sign was already starting to get in a derelict con condition and you might you might want to might want to uh, i i echo that to, I, I mean there's no need with that sign with the tower so um um so my i guess my final comment let's see is there is there seating outside or just inside uh, in, there's a seating in, in, and there's a, um uh an exterior uh deacon's bench but no okay. no, no exterior dining Okay, um, so my other one was from uh, the fire prevention's uh, fire fire protection perspective. Uh, your 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 building says not sprinklered, and that always concerns me being a fire firefighter. Um, uh, what's the reasoning behind that, and what other fire protection features might be in place? Because I think your closest closest fire hydrant is at will, will be at Oakton and Naples Road. So so there's not not a hot fire hydrant there and and you're not sprinkling the property yeah we do do it uh on a, a monitor to fire alarm smoke detector system within the building for those safety measures plus you know um grill exhaust um uh, ansel systems within the building uh it, it it is a prototypical building from taco bell uh that we take all those design uh considerations and fire safety within the building uh, so something we do take seriously. Uh, no, it's typically not uh, a sprinkle building to answer your question, though. No. Yeah, and and to add to that, the um, international fire code um, requires sprinkler buildings over a certain area, um, floor area, but we have been coordinating with the Anne Arundel County Fire Marshal, and um, we have part of that conversation has been fire hydrants. So, um there's a likelihood that we will be required to provide a fire hydrant along the frontage um, of the site uh, based off of the concerns that you have brought up. Um, but those conversations are still um, occurring. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm your closest firefighter. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, obviously a concern of mine, so. Um, Thank uh, you for your service. <laughs> Uh, so I, I, I don't, I don't want to be there and find out I have no water. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, we, we currently have one shown um, based off of the location that the fire marshal has um, recommended, but we're still kind of figuring that out. Yeah, I think I think the closest ones there is Annapolis. It's actually Oakton and probably Murray. Uh, is yeah, the closest hydrant. There is one I think over at this intersection at Oakton, um, and then the adjacent site to the east um, does have a few as well. Thanks, David. Jerry. Sorry, it just took me a minute there, Jerry. You you should be on. Yeah, no worry. I'm used to it by now. So yes, in addition to everyone else's concerns about one way, I have another additional um, I guess you can say suggestion, or if it's possible recommendation, is that if you do go down a path, does that mean that you can now ha um redesign your parking to be angled instead of straight? If, if this were to be turned into one way, that is an option. Um, so we will definitely explore all the options. Another and, thing I don't, sorry, go ahead. I'll add, if, if it does go to one way, I think we'll just have to do angled. I don't think there's other, any other way we could make it yeah. work, at which point we'd have to look into uh, making sure there's enough parking overall. Yeah, that will also improve the traffic flow as well. Um, but in addition to that, I don't so I understand the site distance note that you have there, but one thing I'm trying to see if that has any relation to is if you're doing the one way and people make left turn, I don't know how close that tree is going to be to the actual driver's side window because it might block their view if it grows out from being able to see traffic coming from the west direction. So I don't know if you had to move it or trim it back or something, but the, I don't see any triangle in that section right there. Yeah, so we did um, explore this. So the 25 foot distance for the site triangle is um, in accordance with the Balt or sorry, Anne Arundel County uh, landscape manual um, it, and with the locations. Um, so we have shifted the trees outside of that. In addition, um, we have a note on the plan and for the um, trees within the public right away to be uh, limbed up to seven feet to prevent site dis distance conflict. Okay, so that should have um, also include, don't know if that's a number to indicate a tree, but when you zoomed in, there was a 160, that particular tree, not there, actually at the um, stop line. Sorry, up here? Yeah, that tree under 160. I don't know if that's too close to the driver's side window where they stop. That's all I'm asking about. Oh, I'm sorry, this one? To the, uh, to the left. <laughs> to the one. left side oh, of the Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I, I get, we would have to look into that. the the um the landscape manual only requires the um site triangles for the right hand um turns. Um, but we can look into this as well. Um, just to clarify, it, it, they only the... they only require it for the right side, but we do have to take into consideration pedestrian and vehicular safety for all our designs. So that is something yeah. that will be analyzed and assessed to make sure that's not a, not a concern safety wise. Yeah. Yeah, and we'll we'll analyze that in conjunction with the sidewalk um, crossing for the federal aid uh, sidewalk as well. And the last thing I had is that if you indicated you're not a 24 hour hours operation, does that include the late end hours that I see some Taco Bells operate until 2 a.m. or is that a different type of hours operation? Uh, no, we do have late night, um, depending on the location, I believe it goes uh, some locations stay up to the 1 a.m. and other locations stay up to 2 a.m. I'm not too sure what this one's going to be, but it's not 24 hours a day. Okay, so there's potential it can be late night. It, it will have late night, yeah. That's the intent. Okay, that's all I had. Thank you, Dan. Okay, thanks, Jerry. All right, any other members of the public who have comments? Okay, bring it back to the committee. So in terms of the items that we heard today, so there are the different modifications, none of which are within the purview of the OTCAC. Uh, so um, they were they were sent to us. I'm not going to list them off, but I will list them off in the letter um, with a with a not in purview. We'll need to confirm that that's the that's the stance of the committee. 
Uh, the last item then would, that would be part of the letter is basically, do we believe this meets the vision intent of the master plan? I can express comments uh, from the committee regarding, uh, committee and public regarding the parking modifications, as well as the um, ensuring the buffer from the assisted living is proper. Uh, mentioning that uh, we um, uh, asked about a 24 hour service and this is not gonna be a 24 hour Taco Bell. Our concerns about ingress, egress, and uh, I can also mention that while well, it's outside the purview of the committee, that the, the public and the committee did feel that the sign detracts from the site and detracts from the modernness that, uh, that Taco Bell is bringing. Um, uh, but the question before the committee then is, in addition to all of those items, do we feel that this meets the intent of the master plan? The vision and intent of the master plan. I motion that it does. <clears throat> okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Thanks, Eric. Uh, all right. So uh, the motion is for uh, us to say that this is uh, does meet the intent of the master plan. Um, I've listed off the comments of uh, the comments and content of the letter briefly before the motion. Uh, are there any other further comments in terms of the content of the letter? Okay. Hearing none. Any other? comments or feedback on the content of, uh, like, should do you, does anyone in the committee feel like we should say, do we approve of this project or are we simply going to state that, uh, that, that we feel that this meets the intent and vision of the master plan and should proceed? I'm just trying to get a sense of, of how I should phrase the letter so, um, with the new master plan. So I think the second way, Jason, because we're not an approval committee. Correct. We're just an advisory committee. So let's advise that it, you know, Matt, I think that going forward, we should basically say that, you know, we've reviewed it. These are our concerns. However, it meets them, you know, the, the spirit of the master plan and that's it. Okay. All right. Any other comments or discussion? I, I do want to add that one of the things that has come up many times is just how having uh, fast food restaurants is not really something that we are excited about seeing in downtown Odenton. Um, and I don't necessarily agree that it completely meets the spirit of the master plan because I think the master plan was written specifically with the hopes of getting smaller businesses and more local businesses together. Um, so that is, that's my personal comment on that. Um, and so I am not in favor of saying that we are supportive of this project necessarily. Um, yeah, but at the same time, it's better than having nothing on the site. So, so that's uh, Colette. That's exactly right, and I hope that everybody read what what Mark sent out about development, the cost of development, and everything right now, because um, there aren't any local or small tenants that can afford new space. There's not a local tenant that can afford to develop that site. Okay, that site was purchased for a couple million dollars. It's going to take another million and a half to develop. Tell me who's got that money to do that. And the retail space is a tenant's going to have to spend $50 a foot to go into a retail space. So, you know, it, it's a difficult time right now. Anything coming out of the ground now was planned three years ago. And anything that comes up like this that has an opportunity, we, we need to grab it. And if just like the bank now has retired and is old and, and needs to be revitalized at some point in time, when the Taco Bell isn't reveling any more than something else will go there. But for the time being, we got to get some things moving or we're just going to have empty buildings and empty sites. And, and that's what's, that's the reality of it. And I appreciate your comments. I really do. It's just difficult to accomplish what you're talking about. It really is right now. Okay. So in terms of the letter, um, basically what I've written is that, that the committee believes that this meets the vision 10 to the master plan. While the OTCAC would love to see, uh, an increase in local businesses in the OTC, the reality is that the county, uh, we recommend that the county, um, uh, continue with replacing vacant sites that are, are more of a blight on the community with active businesses that attract, um, attract the either additional businesses or residents to improve the ability for our residents to, to live, work, and, and enjoy the community. Does that, is that a, a fair middle language that we can all agree to?
Okay, hearing no comments, then any other feedback on the letter? All right, so the motion was made. You know the content. Uh, all in favor? Um, let me see, I need to bring up everybody's picture so I can see everybody. Uh, sorry, this is the hard part about Zoom. Um, you can you can stop broadcasting if you want your your uh, present your screen. It actually make it a little bit easier for me to see everybody if you stop your. There you go. Okay, now I can see all our, our committee members. So, um, uh, for our committee members, if you could indicate your vote in terms of approval of the content of the letter as listed. So, all in favor, uh, say aye, raise your hand, or do a thumbs up. Aye. Okay. Uh, okay. So I see one, two, three, four, five in favor. Um, all right. All opposed to the content of the letter as listed. Okay. One, two. Okay. So by a vote of five to two, the, the, uh, the eyes have it. So I will draft the letter to indicate that this meets the vision intent of the master plan and, um, uh, we'll also discussing local business needs and the reality of, of replacing sites with active businesses and including all of the comments. So thank you for, uh, for coming and presenting and, uh, that's all we have for you. So thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank you for your time. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you very much. Have a great thank, you. thank you. Okay. I'm trying to keep us moving on schedule. If I can, we're a little bit behind, but I think we uh, are going to be okay. Um, so uh, now moving to developer presentation one, 1405 Odenton. Do we have the presenters? Yeah, so Terry and Stuart. Okay. All right, so um, I'll turn it over to either one of you. I'm going to start, and thank you, everybody. I'm going to take off the one hat and put on a different hat here. Um, so um, I appreciate everybody um, allowing us to present today. Um, so let me start about where the property is located. Um, if not anyone is, everyone is familiar with it. Um, we're off the portion of Odin and Road um, on the west side near the Mark Train Garage. Um, I guess the, the most famous um, spot there is the hideaway on, on Odin and Road. Um, the street is currently made up of a mix of residential warehouse and um, and restaurants. Um, the property is located between the Watts House, which is against the rail, um, and the Epiphany Church and the cemetery there. Uh, the only other historical properties on the street are across from the church. There's the Odin and Volunteer Fire Station. Dave, I don't know if you're still on. Um, and which is currently a residence. Um, uh, the form stone is still on the outside. It really wasn't renovated, but um, it, it does look nice. Um, and the, the old Pumphrey grocery store and post office, um, which has also um, been sold a couple times. It might be for sale now. And um, it's been used most recently as multifamily. Um, so um, the frontage on 1405 Odin and Road. Um, Stuart, Stuart, excuse me. Do you see my screen? Just I do. Okay. Good. Yeah. Yeah. You can carry if you want. I mean, you can run your cursor on areas that I'm speaking of. Maybe. I just want to make sure you saw it. Thank you. Yeah, I got it. So um, the frontage on 1405 includes a home um, on our property. Um, I. Um, there is a claim by the county that this is a historical property, um, and we are claiming it is not. Um, we did get a letter from um, from the folks at Cultural um, Cultural Affairs, and um, we'll have a further discussion with them about it. But it isn't on the historical society's list. It's not on the Maryland Trust. It's not on the Anne Arundel County Trust. It's just a house. Um, the Watts House, um, however, is listed, um, and I'm not sure if it's possible they are being mixed up at this point. Um, the intent is actually to carve off that particular property, which we'll show you in a minute, create its own lot, renovate it, 
um, and it will be housed with either office or residential for the folks at um, Ferguson Trench and Company, which is the owner of the property. Um, <clears throat> currently, um, Ferguson Trenching operates out, out of about 15,000 square feet located at the rear triangle of the property. You can see a couple buildings there where the point of the triangle comes. And then if we look below that, that is the Fort Meade landfill, um, which is currently capped. There were previous discussions of that being a golf course. There are previous discussions of, of other uses, and right now, um, the intent of Fort Meade is for it to be maintained as a landfill. Um, the new building um, is also planned against the rail. Terry will go over in, um, that in a moment and will be set back quite a bit from Odin and Road. Um, Terry, if you could show the interior road to the Ferguson property. Um, if you can go back to the other aerial map. That interior road is a private road, and this entire project is being with inside of that interior road is not fronting whatsoever um, on Odenden Road. Um, certainly, you know, a side of the building will be facing it, but it's set back quite a bit. Um, <clears throat> Ferguson Trenching has been in business uh, since 1966. It's a family owned business started by Stanley and Steve Ferguson now run by their sons, and Jeff is our point of contact um, for the development of this property for their personal use. Um, they employ 260 people, many of them living right here in Odenden. Close proximity to Mark Train Station provides transit opportunity to recruit workforce from a much larger area, and they have a very um, specific workforce for what they do. Um, FT, um, Ferguson's need for this building is for additional offices to run their business, as well as a training facility um, for all the BG&E um, pipe work that they have been doing for 40 years now uh, throughout the state. Um, <clears throat> let's see, um, the Odin Town, it, it will be in the Odin uh, Town Center mix area, at least the front of the property. When the maps are redone for comprehensive zoning, the back of the property, the triangle beyond the power lines where, where their existing facilities are, um, that will become part of um, East Odenden uh, Industrial Area. Um, the um, intended use does fall within um, the allowable uses on page 134 and 136 of the new Odenden Master Plan. Um, we are not going to be using or uh, creating any additional traffic because uh, this is for existing employees. This is not for anything that's bringing folks off site that aren't already on site. And um, it also the parking that we are proposing um, for staff will handle some of the existing uh, parking issues on the property and also possible um, use for the church for funerals um, on the weekends. Um, any tree or vegetation removal. Most of the trees in this area are small brush, um, thin trees. There is one specimen tree. The reason why we're not asking currently for a modification on this is because we are going to try to save the tree and incorporate it into the project. Um, in the event that it doesn't work, uh, we'll come back uh, to the county and, and through a letter to the committee um, with that request. Um, there will be a lot, you know, there will be vegetation between the house that's going to be split off on the Odin and Road side of the property and, and the building. So there will be vegetation um, and forestation existing that will hide that property. There also has been a 25 foot forestation easement created throughout this uh, 17, almost 18 acre property along the rail line that was done some time ago. So there already has been um, um, some, some um, forest retention on the property. Um, the plantings of the property will be 75% native planting, plantings. Um, and let me see. Um, Owning the town center plan encourages residential business growth around the Mark train station. And this plan does that. Site's proximity to Mark allows for multiple for multimodal opportunities, including walking, biking, mark, 
local bus, and automobile. Um, bike racks will be provided along with picnic rural areas for employees. I'm going to stop there and let Terry talk about the plan directly, and then we can go into some um, um, other concerns. And then um, I will also uh, go through a list of how this um, matches up with the intent of the master plan. Sure. Thank you, Stuart. Um, hi there. Uh, my name is uh, Terry Schumann. I'm with uh, Atwell. We're an engineering firm out of Annapolis, Maryland here, and uh, happy to be working on this project. Um, I, I put together just some exhibits. Uh, Stuart took a lot of the, uh, already said a lot of the things, so I'll try not to repeat. But um, again, just this exhibit was just an overall aerial, um, you know, subject property, 1405 quarter, uh, Odenton Road in Odenton, Maryland. It's also known as tax map 29, parcel 10. The track size is 18.87 uh, acres. And um, one thing I just wanted to point out, you know, we got, obviously got the railroad that we're all familiar with, and then there's a BG right away um, that traverses the site and um, essentially is what we're going to use for, um, for the breakup of the lots. And I'll explain that in a second. So uh, it is, as you said, bordered by the landfill, the army uh, in Fort Meade. We have the cemetery and the church um, to the south, and then, um, you know, uh, the Watts um, house uh, residential uh, up against the railroad over there. Other than that, we're bordered by the by the railroad. Uh, just moving on to another exhibit, um, we did just, I want to just show you this from an overall standpoint. Um, this kind of shows the, you know, the, again, the BG right away that traverses the site. So we're going to call this lot three is what we're proposing to do a, uh, a three lot subdivision. Um, lot one will be the um, uh, the existing house that fronts up on Odenton Road. So I, I'll show it a little better here in a minute, but we'll carve out a lot there uh, and utilize the one private road. This is a paved 30 foot road that, that goes back and serves Ferguson Trenching and we'll utilize that same road to, to serve our lot two, which is gonna be the remainder of the tract that um, goes up to the right of way. So that'll be lot two, again, lot one being the house, lot two being the proposed office building, um, the new office building. Um, and we'll, we'll show that here in a little bit in a second. And then lot three would be the remaining um, Ferguson trenching facility, contractor yard and, and building uh, in the rear. Um, moving on, I just, just to show a little bit about, so this again, gives you a little more um, idea on what we're doing from a lot one. So this is carving out lot one around the existing house. There'll be a, there already is a little um, parking display area here and um, we'll, we'll be providing parking as well and the same connection that's there be, that exists today. Again, using the common access road, the private drive that, that serves the back lot We'll utilize that and we're um, proposing an 11,000 uh, gross square foot office and then um, support staff building this. I'll show you a rendering here in a few minutes. Um, we'll, we'll have access at both ends, uh, parking, and we set this building back um, as far as possible that we could to the uh, BG right away, which traverses the site here. Again, the cemetery in this area, and then we have the, um, the Watts house up um, on the top of the page. Um, and again, I, I don't know if Stuart mentioned this, but again, we're under the two, 2023 master plan and code um, um, that just got uh, introduced and, and approved. So uh, we'll be following that. As far as parking goes, um, from a standpoint of the, uh, of the house, we'll provide two parking spaces as required by code. As far as the uh, new 11,000 square foot building, um, 42 parking spaces are required for the um, office component of that. And um, we're going to be providing 60 parking spaces. And then if you go back to the to the rear um, area that presently exists today, there's um, 26 required parking spaces. Again, this building's made up of office and contractor yard and storage areas. Uh, so 26 parking spaces required, and we have 71 parking spaces that exist out there today. And, and honestly, there, there's no really no proposed changes in the rear of the lot. Uh, Stuart mentioned before about the forest conservation um, aspects of it. So 
um, I don't know, probably about five years ago, um, Ferguson Trenching did some improvements out there and they um, they did place uh, some forest conservation areas around the site. Um, you can see forest conservation area back here. We had a forest conservation here that encompassed some of the wetlands that exist out there along the, the border of the property. Obviously the BG right away has, has, um, is a right away, so nothing there, but then we have forest conservation around, essentially around the cemetery. And Stuart, I don't mean to correct you, but the um, the buffer along the railroad is a, uh, that's really a public easement. And and that was for a 36 inch um, water main that the county built years ago that Ferguson provided the um, the land for. So there was a, there's a 36 inch transmission main, pretty pretty large water main that, that runs along that shore, so uh, along the railroad. So it, it wasn't a, it's not a landscape buffer, it's a um, public utilities. Um, as far as um, landscaping goes, and I think I'll just, I'll go down. We, we, do, we did propose a, um, just a conceptual landscape at this time and, um, you know, foundation plan things. We'll, we're gonna, we're gonna provide um, landscaping and meet all the, the landscaping manual requirements, um, interior green, park, we'll put landscaping in between the building and the parking spaces and the sidewalk that serve the building. Um, we were planning to, uh, and we're obviously gonna have to work with the cultural resources a little more with some of the comments that we just received, but uh, the idea was uh, to screen the view shed of the building and the parking from Odenton Road. And, and this was gonna be a heavily um, landscaped area with um, hollies, evergreens and shade trees. And then we'll have um, street trees and a sidewalk connection up along the front. Um, I think I'll just I'll go here. This is kind of an overview as well. Um, and again, you'll this is more for the front two two lots there. So we will, um, from a landscape standpoint, we'll be meeting all the buffers and landscaping requirements for the for the Anne Arundel County manuals. Um, activity space and green areas. Um, we will, um, in the activity space, uh, we'll meet the activity space. Um, we'll meet the green areas, um, activity spaces. We were proposing some barbecue areas in the back for the employees. And, and the green areas, we're, we're obviously gonna meet the um, minimum 10% um, required. As far as the zoning setbacks, all, this, all the zoning setbacks will be, will be met with this uh, three lot configuration. Uh, bicycle and pedestrian amenities, we are proposing, um, from a pedestrian standpoint, we are going to propose a sidewalk connection. The sidewalk currently right now ends at the church. We'll continue that sidewalk up along Bodenton Avenue along the frontage. And uh, we'll provide bicycle um, uh, bicycle um, uh, racks for, um, for, the, for the proposed facility as well as um, along Bodenton Avenue, Bodenton Road. Uh, outdoor seating and furniture. We we do propose some outdoor seating and furniture along Odenton Road as well. Uh, and I, I think I failed to mention it, but Odenton Road is a um, scenic and historic road in Anne Arundel County. Um, and that's something I'll get into here in a minute on the modifications. So signage and lighting. There is a current sign out out front, and um, there's a good possibility that sign will be just improved. Um, as far as um, for Ferguson trenching and um, lighting, you know, there'll, there'll be adequate lighting, light shields, um, so we, so the light doesn't bleed off into the neighboring properties. We don't want to bother the people living in the cemetery. Right. Um, and I, and your know, lot configuration, like I said before, three lots. Um, we'll coordinate a little more on the cultural resources and some of the comments we got as far as this lot line is. But, Proposed lot one, and then as it, as indicated before, the historic preservation design aspects. There are some um, questions from the cultural resources, and um, we're going to be working with them closely. Um, modifications, um, as as Stuart indicated, there is uh, one specimen tree um, that we located in in the area here. Uh, it's actually I'll, I'll go back to um, you can see it here. That there's a 36 inch uh, willow oak. Our environmentalists um, looked at it; it's in good condition. So, this is a tree we're gonna we're gonna uh, try to save and um, work around it. Um, but in the in the event that the um, 
you know, the requirements and everything for the development here uh, take it out, we will we will have to come back and ask for a modification. Uh, the other modification, and Stuart didn't mention this, but any forest that that's in the county uh, is is considered priority. And um, if we clear any forest, we will have to get a modification for clearing forest. So I just want to mention that that is probably a modification that we will we will have to um, get. And then I, the third modification I just wanted to touch on was just um, the scenic and historic road. Uh, if you look at the um, you know the road standards for um, Odenton Road from Magazine Road, the Mark Station, there's uh, roadway widths and parking lanes and um, parallel spaces and those things that are required. And being that it's a scenic and historic road, we're going to have to work with the cultural resources, but um, typically they don't like to see um, the change in the road. So I just was anticipating that we would have some modification to the required road standards due to the scenic and historic um, requirements for the road. Um, stormwater management, we will um, comply with all the state and county requirements. You can see uh, we have some microbio areas um, and we were um, microbio areas and we were also looking at some uh, um, imperm you know, some permeable pavement in the um, in the parking stalls. And again, I didn't talk a little bit about this about the building, but the building is a, a training and support staff for for their employees. Um, currently right now that you know we show access on both sides of the of the building uh, with the dumpster in the in the rear screened from the house from the um, structure from Odenton Road. And again, we'll utilize the existing paved area that serves the uh, contractors in the back and um, use that for uh, our access points. Um, going to a building rendering, I just want to touch base. Uh, the building is a, a two-story building, um, 24 foot high, and this was a con conceptual um, architectural plan that the uh, architect provided to us. Stuart, I don't know if you want to add anything to that. Or... Yeah, I mean, um, you know, as far as a building goes, and, and um, you know, we we try to it, it's it's modern industrial. Um, we got two different types of facade treatments. One is going to be a, a veneer of um, a brick, um, and the other is a sheet metal veneer. So um, that's going to be look at the building, a uh, glass atrium, the windows also, again, looking at, you know, the, the Nevermore factory in the area. And, and also the fact that the train station um, parking garage is directly across the street um, of Odenden Road um, from the entrance to the property, not this, this specific building. Um, and that building is going to be 40 feet high. So this is half the height. Um, our square footage is 11,000 square feet. And uh, the proposed train station, I don't recall, it might be 100,000 square feet or more. So just to give you an idea of scale that this building is, is much smaller um, than it would seem. Um, yeah, it's an industrial building, um, but again, we tried to incorporate the, the windows and again, making it look like a two-story building. There, there may be some um, office um, on the second floor in a loft situation um, in the interior, um, so those windows will actually be useful in the event that that is built. And Stuart, I did have this, just this was the Watt House and the... Um... Yeah, so again, I mean, a, a cultural resources um, um, has um, indicated about this particular house and what they feel we have to do and is necessary. And I'm going to respectfully disagree um, because as you see the property, well, if you could point out, um, you yeah, know, the Watts House is right there and, and this the property next to it, there's nothing next to it. Um, thank you, Terry. Um, that's the Watts house and then the church to the left. Right. This is the Watts house 25. Correct. Correct. And then go across to the church. Right. And this is our left. house on our, on our property. Right. The church. So as you can see, they're really, um, I'm not sure what they're talking about. Um, I did research again, the state, um, <clears throat> historic preservation. It's not listed. It's not listed as a potential. I researched Anne Arundel County, 
and it is not listed as well. So um, you can't just decide that it's historic. It, it, it really needs to be, and I'm not exactly sure of that process, but um, I'm sure we'll be able to work it out and we'll address it accordingly. Uh, if there's anything that's necessary, we'll come back uh, um, to the committee for that as well. Terry, if you go back, the, the other modification, I mean, we really don't know how the county is going to respond to Odin and Road. Um, do we have to put a, a, a sidewalk in front? Well, when the improvements were done on the other side of Odin and Road um, in the historic district, um, there were no sidewalks allowed to be put in those areas. So same thing, we're more than happy to do it, um, but um, curb and gutter on Urban and Road being a scenic drive can't be done. We'll have to see what the requirement is for a sidewalk. Um, and then we will propose one from Odin and Road um, directly into the site, um, you know, for the folks that are using Mark to come to uh, come to work. It's also a trail directly across from the property and that leads to the Mark train station. It goes between um, the, the single family homes that are directly across the street. Um, so again, convenience on this site to Mark as far as uh, developing, uh, satisfying a large employee uh, in the county and allowing them to maintain um, their existing employee base and, and grow. Um, I, let me go over, because I'm going to take, let me go over compatibility. Um, Terry, if you don't mind, um, we were asked again in this new plan, um, how does it fit? Regarding natural environment, um, we have the rail to the east, which is a natural barrier um, on NE 1.1B. Uh, previous forest conservation was addressed for the entire property. Um, and it's being developed in areas where there is no forest conservation. Um, NE 1.1D, minimum of 75% native plantings, which we will do. And it is built on an interior private road. So um, it is it is really back hidden quite a bit. Um, built environment, major employer with a sense of community and they are very community involved. Um, it's consistent with other commercial uses along Odin and Road, which include uh, two other warehouse projects that actually sit right on Odin and Road. Um, BE uh, 1.3 and BE 4.2, uh, transit-oriented development with options to bike, walk, mark, reducing car trips, protecting historic property by creating its own lot, buffering and landscape um, remains to be seen if it is historic. Uh, BE 3.1C, uh, no change to the scenic and historic designated Odin and Road. BE 5.7, F, G, and I, um, we are providing more parking than is required. And again, an advantage um, with being around the Mark train station because there's quite a bit of parking being provided. Healthy community, BE 1.1J, uh, bike racks, outdoor barbecue, encouraging a healthy lifestyle. BE 3, um, improving and increasing visibility to historic house, uh, once again, to be determined. And healthy economy, HE 2.1 BC, uh, Ferguson Trenching Company employs 260 people, many who live in the community. And HE 2.1 H, this will allow future growth, creating more jobs and adding to the local economy. Can you explain uh, BE3? There you go. I wasn't reading from that. I was <laughs> reading from mine, but that's okay. I don't know if there's any difference. It's improving visibility to historic house. How are you doing that? Uh, I'm sorry? It says improving visibility to historic house. Yeah, I, 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 well, visibility by creating its own, it's, we're going to create its own lot. We're going to renovate the house. And again, I question whether it is or, or, or is historic. Um, we're just going to be parceling it off and landscaping it off. To this, just this is the it. one that right by the tracks, right? This is the one that you. No, it's not right through. by the tracks. It's it's over. It's not the blue one. Not the blue one. It's not the blue the, one. The blue one was right next to the tracks, right? 
Correct. The blue one is in this other parcel. Terry, if you could show the parcel below, you got to come. No, no, same picture you just had was fine. Yeah, this, the parcel here. Um, yeah, that's it, Terry. That's the parcel that the blue house is in. I see. And then to the back of that parcel with the blue house, if you looked at an aerial, there's another structure there. That's a, a modern garage that they built several years ago. So that that house, the the, the one you're talking about. Yes, sir. Um, you're going to buy that house? They already own it. It's part of the Ferguson property. Okay. It's part. It, it's all one lot right now. The 18.8 .8 acres includes that property and goes all the way back to the triangle tip. Uh -huh. And what we're proposing to do is to um, create three lots and create a lot for the residential property. Could be office, could be residential, according to the Odenick Town Center plan. Um, and then create a separate lot for the new building that is proposed. And then the third lot would be everything um, to the south of the um, uh, BGE transmission lines that traverse the property. Um, that's probably about, I don't know, Terry, what do you say? That is probably about 13 acres, maybe. That 13 acres will be a lot as well. And don't quote me on the acreage. I'm yeah, not the, the, just so we all... The, the lot acreage in the back is about 14 acres. The the proposed uh, building will be uh, 4.3 acres. And then we're proposing a half acre for the existing house. And as far as existing house and the c c consistency, um, I looked in the, uh, I, I went through the SDT, every single property, residential property in Odin and Road. And the lots go anywhere from 5,876 square feet to 30,000 square feet, which is about three quarters of an acre. So our half acre, proposing half acre lot is consistent um, with the rest of the residential properties along Odenden Road. Terry, do you have a, a view where you could pull way back? I was looking at the, the material before the meeting and I sometimes I just get disoriented when we look at different angles here. Would this um, help, this one help? You. Yeah, which so here's the here's the train station. Okay. The railroad track, and then on the other side of this is the mark um parking lot and everything. Yeah, okay. The church and the cemetery are right here. Okay. Now I'm with you. Okay. And then here's Town Center Boulevard, I guess that comes down here. Yep. Or Morgan Road. I can see the different names. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does that help you? Yes, it does. Thanks, Terry. Appreciate that. And I think um I think that's it from our um side. Um any questions? Thanks, Stuart. Thanks, Terry. So yes, we're open to the committee for questions. Anyone on the committee have questions, comments, or feedback? Um, I know you went over this probably a number of times before I even joined the call. Sorry about that. But okay. um, you mentioned um, that there were a number of trees that may be removed in this area. Um, Terry, I think you were going through some of the locations where you're going to actually keep the forest. Uh, yeah, areas. I think if you, um, I don't know, this is kind of, but but you can see all the dark, all the forest on this side of the um, of the existing road that goes back to Ferguson Trenching. That all remains. That's all in easements and preserved. Mm -hmm. But the forest um, up in this area, we would we would be proposing to clear it with maybe some select trees that um, we we'd select some trees that that would stay as much as we can. But we would supplement it with landscaping and buffering and screening. Yeah. I don't know what kind of trees are in that area. Do you know? But uh, the mix of a lot of scrub, a lot of scrub, a lot of scrub, yeah, it's small diameter trees. Okay. And 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 like I said before, when we when we when we did the forest conservation previously, we um, let me just go to that. Did the forest conservation previously when we were looking at this as a whole site for Ferguson trenching? I mean, there is there's a. 
the idea was to try to keep the most valuable forest and put it in an easement. And there was some some good forest up in here. There's some natural um, wetlands in this area here, so we we put this in a preservation easement. Um, mm -hmm. All this has been all this buffer here was just they were just good tree buffers that we um, mm -hmm. put those in forest conservation easements and as well as um, everything everything on the um, bottom side of the uh, paved road we put in an easement just because it it just made sense and it was the good good valuable forest at the time. They've been good stewards. Yeah. Um, speaking of that, Stuart, <laughs> um, what about the building? Um, you showed a picture of that, Terry. Um, what are the plans for the building besides the facade that you discussed? Um, I'm not sure what kind of solar access you have there. Are you considering solar panels on the roof? For you, yes. Whether we do it or not, I don't know. <laughs> Come on. Uh. <laughs> you know, Come Martin, on. have you done your house yet? Do you have an electric car yet? Well, I don't have good orientation on my roof. I know. Well, we, we don't know whether this will or not either. So I will mention it to Jeff as a priority to see whether we can do something solar on the roof there. Great. Okay. Great. We'll Thanks. To, we will look into it. Good, good. Thank you. I don't think it's a bad suggestion for this property, honestly. The one of the things that only concerns me is that the the the, the load that they may need for some of the stuff just so so far exceeds the ability of the amount of solar power you're going to generate. But something mm -hmm. is better than nothing. We'll see what we can do. Okay. Good. Good. Any other questions? Feedback? Yeah, Jason, I have a few questions. Uh, Stu and Terry, um, do you have any pictures of the existing offices? Well, this, I keep hearing training center, mm -hmm. and I'm also hearing offices. Um, yeah. So the, does the existing storage yard and office go away? No, no, this is in addition to um, and it falls within our ability to add uh, additional square footage on the entire property and site. So, um, no, this is in addition to right now. Um, they have some offices off site that they would like to pull back on site. They also have a training facility that they rent um, over at 8176 Telegraph Road. Um, is that across from the church? Yes, yes. Okay. And they're in the back there on um, where Barton Ceilings used to occupy in their offices. So they have office space up there. And then in the warehouse area, I'll call it, they have a training, a pipe fitting training where they teach pipe fitters how to weld, um, how to bend, things of that nature. So it'll be both an office component and a, and a training facility inside. I mean, to call it a warehouse, it's really not because we're not storing anything. We're not moving things in and out. It's a school for their folks um, and office. So that's the utilization of the, of the uh, building. Okay. And I, I must admit, I knew nothing about this business. When I did a little research yesterday, I was really impressed uh, by the magnitude of, of what they do and where they do it. Um, yep. this, is a, this is a major company. That's why we need to support um, their ability to remain here. And this is what this this does. Yeah. And you mentioned that they were a good um, partner, I guess, mm -hmm. here in the community. They're, they're active in the community. And I guess maybe because trenching and uh, infrastructure sometimes is not that glamorous. We just don't pay attention to these kind of businesses. Um, but this training center, do you know if it's just... For their internal training? That's a great question. Um, are they involved um, like with uh, Anne Arundel County Workforce Development or with the local high school and training? Um, so, so it's you know, very specific. Get to this business? Yeah, it's very specific to their business. Um, it, it's not at this point in time going to be in quotes a school. However, I will tell you that they have had folks from other companies ask whether they could train their their people and it's something that that could happen but right now 
um, the scale and what's being built is for their specific purpose. Okay. And one final question, um, Terry, I think that you mentioned that there were some forest conservation projects previously on the site. Yes. And what initiated those projects? Is it something recent or something that was done many years ago? Uh, it's probably five or six years ago. Um, Ferguson had some requirements they had to do and they, they um, were required to implement some forest conservation, so. Okay. <clears throat> All right, thank you. Any other questions or comments from the committee? Okay, so I have a few questions um, of my own. So, um, so one, uh, I want to say thank you for for how you answered the um, the questions in the development survey about the vision for the master plan. Because, uh, as I indicated in the the last presentation, the question was vague. Because I I'll be honest, I, um, we're still working through exactly how do you ask the 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 development proposals to, to tell us how do you think you're meeting the master plan vision. So, mm -hmm. so the, the fact you gave us a completely different style of answers is good because now we have two different, at least inputs that we can weigh to figure out how do we improve the question uh, that gets asked about the future, future projects. So, um, so I, I appreciate how you approached it because that, that gave us a lot of insight into, into how we can ask it better. Um, uh, I did want to start uh, with the sidewalk. So I, I like what you're saying, Stuart, about how this is trying to connect to the mark to the Mark Lawton and um, uh, in terms of, I, I do agree there's that path that goes through to connect the Mark Lot that goes almost pretty much right across the street from that entryway, but there's no Terry, sidewalk if can, actually. If you can pull up the aerial here. It may be covered by trees. Like you can see it right there on this map. Um, right here, you can you can see yep. where it goes through. Uh, right here, right there's a blue line. Yeah, right there. Yes. Oh, uh, okay. It's not where the blue line is. Around. Correct. Right there is yep. where it goes yep, right through. There. And, it's, and so it's, there's no sidewalk, though, for anybody to walk from the Mark lot into Ferguson's property. And so I didn't know if that was, um, that was like you're intending people to walk right on the road as if they're taking the Mark lot to visit you or not to visit, but to work there, or if you're going to provide some type of connectivity for the proposed um, development. So the, we want to, we want to provide connectivity. Okay, the question is how to do it um, with Odin and Road. I mean, if you're, we'll we'll be providing sidewalk. It might not show in this plan, but we'll provide a sidewalk from Odin and Road to the parking lot of our site so that folks can get there. But it's it's literally walking across the street. There isn't any walking on Odin and Road to get to our site. Right. No, 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 not on Odin. It's the internal road to your site. Yeah, yeah. Our intent is to put a sidewalk on our side of, of the okay. road to connect up there. One of the things we wanted to be careful of is not inviting the public. I mean, this is a private business and a private property. Um, once you put that sidewalk in, you're kind of inviting anybody. Um, however, um, we understand um, the opportunity to provide um, um, walking and bikers coming off of Odin and Road to go on the sidewalk safely into the site. So we'll be doing that. Right. Okay. No, that I, it's it's more of a just pointing out. It's if your goal is to increase connectivity and walkability, like that's that was missing from the current plan. Um, uh, number two is um, I did walk around the I didn't walk actually into the woods, but I did walk around at least along your internal private road to uh, to get an understanding of what the site looked like. And I would agree the the forest that you're clearing is not really what I would consider a forest. It's more like the the scrub forest that is on the hill by the library. It's that that same type of growth in in this area. Uh, so so for example, I I, I I I'm not exactly super keen on that 100% removal and turning all of it into green space. Uh, so I, I hope if you can save some of the, the trees um, there. But one thing I did want to ask is I agree that an office complex is, pro or office professional in general, which I'm assuming is the 136 line that you're referring to, mm -hmm. is permitted. And I, I agree 100%. But I can't figure out how this proposal rectifies against Bill 8423 Amendment Number 13 Exhibit B, or is it Exhibit 8? I have to zoom in to see which it is. It's on page 152 because that looks like a parking lot is being put into the historic village mix, which is not actually an approved use. I don't know how to divide that because the office being in the OTCI makes sense and actually is. But that leftmost parking lot appears to be in the dark green area, which is historic village mix where a parking lot isn't actually a permitted use. So how does that, how does that split occur? 
Yeah, so um, that remains to be seen, Jason. And that's a discussion that we have to have with the historical people. I think looking at a line on a proposed map in an Odenick Town Center plan versus reality of where that is on a um, detailed plan like this is the discussion that we need to have um, with with the historical, I mean, with the cultural uh, uh, folks down at the county. So it's tough for me to really answer that until we have that conversation with them. Okay. Okay. So that, that part wasn't clear as to exactly like what I'm, what I think I'm seeing if I zoom in is there's a, there's a little like horizontal tail, which I'm assuming is that, that cut around for the other, uh, what's the property name? It's the, uh, the Drury property. Um, and so it looks like that, that leftmost parking lot is, is what's still in the green area. And so I think that's that's just, a, I, I couldn't rectify this amendment to the master plan with the proposal to figure out what's a permitted use and what isn't. Um, because it seems like, I guess this is a question, I guess, for Mark. Um, if you have a permitted use in one zoning area and we require parking to be for that permitted use and the parking crosses into another zoning area where it's not a permitted use, what rule takes precedence, the per, the requirement for parking or the permitted use? Or is that like up for interpretation discussion at the county level? I just, I don't know how to rectify that. So because I want to make sure that we're just working off of the existing zoning, right? And not the proposed zoning. Right. I'm looking at the, uh, the, event, the actual picture in the, in uh, the proposed, okay, so the, if we look at even the... Uh, so it'd be map, map five of the map, master plan. Which yep. page is map five on? I see the amendments. Map five is on page 27. Okay, let me look at and that. And so one. this property, I think, has always been essentially split zone because of the bg and &E right-of-way. Okay. Let me find page 27. But the bg and &E right-of-way is not the split line that's proposed. Yeah, I understood. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, All right. So you're saying, so map five is the current. And so, yeah, that's even less specific because there's no cutover that was in map six, which actually made it a lot easier to figure out. So, okay. So yeah, it just, what I don't, and this is the thing I'd, I'd, I'd have to tell the committees. I don't, I don't know how to rectify the, if, if there is a split here where the parking that is required for something that is permitted falls into a not permitted use, I don't know how the, how we could actually say if it does or doesn't meet, because I, I don't know how priorities work. So the office, what's being proposed um, currently under the current adopted zoning, um, because again, Stuart and Terry had said there's nothing being proposed south of bg and &E right away. Mm -hmm. That area to the south is the OTC-T, the transition zoning district. To the north, of the bg and &E right away in its entirety is the Odenton Historic Zoning District. Okay. Where all okay, so that means permitted. all of this falls into the Historic Village mix. Correct. Right now. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, okay. so let me go back down to page 136. Right. And so... Which, which allows office use, right? Right. And right. they permitted a... Park, right. you know, it's a parking lot. Yeah. Okay. So historic village does allow for office professional in general. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Also, and again, I, I know it's a little tricky, but in, from the master plan, um, we could not do comprehensive zoning, which means changing any zone, uh, properties to a new zoning district during this Odenton Town Center master plan update. It's uh, explicit in the code that comprehensive zoning can only be done during the region plan process, mm -hmm. which this is in region five. Um, we anticipate that those maps would be adopted in another two years. So mm -hmm. map five is what is existing, what's adopted, what mm -hmm. developers should be going off of. Map six in the master plan is what we've sort of discussed over the past several years as a committee um, to provide then guidance to the region five planning process for comprehensive zoning. Okay. 
Okay, so that that is helpful then to to at least put that in perspective. So what I don't understand then is the comment that like that Stuart you're saying about the historic um uh piece. And so one of the questions I would have then is so if uh how does historic how does the, this historic um, view change? So for example, there is the I think it was building 25 on that that map that you showed Terry with the purple box or the pink boxes for the one house, the blue house mm -hmm. on the brewery property. Mm -hmm. Um, right. How does historic work for cross property owners? So for example, right now, if I'm looking out from the back of that, that the, the historic property, I see a lot of forest and you're proposing to remove all that forest. Is there nope. a cross property owner, um, issue? There'll be no forest remove that, that I believe Terry, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but oh, historic okay. properties in the front, they have a forested property themselves with a drive that goes to a garage that they built in the back of their property, which would be adjacent to our new building. That has nothing to do with historic. So their vision um, and trees that you're concerned about them having, um, they have built a garage um, to block whatever they would, whatever we would have. Mm -hmm. They would see it's a two-story garage. Um, I understand what you're saying. We're they have trees on their property. We're not removing them mm -hmm. at all, right? So that's where the buffer is. They're not going to see anything different unless they would remove their trees. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. And let's see. In terms of, um, all right. So for modifications, then. Uh, I, it's, I, I just want to make sure we're clear. So Stuart, you said no modifications. Terry, you said we may need modifications and we may need to talk about them. Which, which do you want, or which, what is your official stance to the committee right now? Is it, you are not making any modification requests or you are saying that, that we know we're going to clear the force. So we have to have a modification for that. I, I want to make sure we get the, the scoping correct. Yeah. So I, I, I don't think we need a modification for the forest based on the square footage. Terry, you can correct me if I'm wrong. We are going to try to preserve the specimen tree that we discussed. That, if we can't, we will have to come back for a waiver. Um, the Odenton Road sidewalk, um, um, I, I'm, I don't know whether to ask for a waiver or not. I don't know what the county's viewpoint is going to be um, on that as a scenic road and until we get comments back from the county, this is one of the reasons why having this meeting when we have it um, is sometimes a little difficult because whatever we tell you, and whatever you may tell us, we go back and the county decides to change it, tells us something differently. Because we haven't really, and a lot of people that come to us haven't gone through the process enough um, to clearly tell you what we need. And then sometimes after we go through that process, we realize what we need. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have to go through that process to realize what we need for a modification. One would be the specimen tree. Two would be um, any type of sidewalk along the proposed lot one. Terry, any others? Yeah, I, you know, the, a lot of times we go to these meetings, we just try to anticipate what the county's going to ask for um, to, to hopefully maybe not have to come back if we have to. So uh, I think just the ones we talked about, Stuart, I, I think what you just mentioned. Yeah. And and we also are going to combine, combine the site plan and, and um, um, what is it? The two plans, we're going to ask for a modification, which is out of the purview of this committee. Um, so that's something that we'll ask um, the county for, but again, not in the purview of the committee. So, right, you know, again, we're we're up in we're up in the air. Um, this is our designated community meeting as well as the Union Town Center meeting, and as of right now, we aren't asking for any modifications until we go through the process um, to find out. Yes, can we save the tree? Do we or don't we have to do a sidewalk? Um, and, and that, then, then we'll be able to answer that question. And then the parking lot too. On the uh, specimen tree, uh, Terry or Stewart, 
why wouldn't you be able to save that? What is going to affect that tree potentially? No, I think we can. I mean, okay. I think we can. I just sometimes the um just want to mention it. That that's all. Our, our intent is to save that tree. Yeah, just, just like we talked about before. If we put a sidewalk here, it's just more disturbance, more more things that the county asks about uh, whether you can or can't save that tree. So just we are going to do everything we can to save that tree. It's it's in good shape. So okay. Okay. All right. So those were all the questions. I mean, yeah, Stuart, you're you're completely right in terms of it seems like we have more open-ended questions right now than answers in terms of like what does this the 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 uh the your the discussions you mentioned with the historic uh the historical review that the planning and zoning does, what does that mean? Um, what does that impact in terms of this overall project because of of uh wherever that the boundaries are, um, what's allowed, what isn't. So I I I don't um I don't think that we're gonna get any of those answers now, just like you said. So um so we just have to work with what we have. All right, so um, that's all the questions I had. Um, so at this point, I'd like to open it up to the public, if any of the members of the public have any questions. Okay, Jerry. Well, thanks a lot, Mark. You had your hand on the trigger for that one. For me, allow me to speak, unmute me. So uh, for this one, I wondering do we have any idea how much staffing they're going to try to put in that building? Because it might have a impact on the neighboring retail section. Um, no, I'm not sure what impact it would have other than positive. And um, again, we're working with the same workforce. It's it's for the same workforce that has already works out of the property. They do have offices, as I said, in the training center elsewhere. But those people were here before they outgrew space, had to go somewhere else, and now we're bringing them back. All right. What I meant more is like there's all that development that's going to happen there with the parking garage and everything. I don't know if there's going to be any actual positive impact, which I agree with, because they're trying to put a new actual retail place in that one too. So just basically a cross impact I can see in a more where they can benefit each other because this might be another reason for you to put that sidewalk so your place can head over there and get some retail services. Gotcha. Yeah, that's pretty much all I had for that one. Great, thanks, Jerry. We're gonna work on that. Okay, anyone else from the public? Okay, so I do have to do one check with Mark real quick. So Mark, for purposes of quorum, we had, uh, uh, looks like Abigail, Colette, and Andrew drop. Now we do have five, including Stuart, but if Stuart is 100% recused from uh, committee quorum, then we do not have quorum anymore to make a decision on this letter. Stuart can abstain from any of the votes, which means that he has no participation. What I don't know is if he counts for quorum for this topic of discussion. That's a great point. Yeah, that is a good question. Um, <clears throat> what we can do is, you know, in the simplest term, I understood it as, as long as you have a majority of, ooh, it's a it's a majority of voting members, but right as if Stewart is. But Stewart's position would be to. I'm going to vote. I'm just going to recuse myself. Yes, yeah, right. Opinion. Exactly. So, so go ahead and vote, and uh, for the record, and I'll follow up with our um, our office of law, and and get some more clarification. Then, okay. if if it's not Jason, then maybe you can send it out, and then we can get a vote that way. Is that okay, Mark? Uh, no, it has to be in a public setting to qualify under the open, beer, uh, open okay. meeting. Correct. Right. Okay. Yeah, so we, we would just need to revisit this at the next meeting. Okay. So. Yep. So, okay. So, um, yeah, so so just to restate for, for the public and the committee, what we will do is mm -hmm. we will finish our discussion up with the content of the letter. 
uh, and hold a vote um, where we we automatically know what one member is going to be voting because he's he's already stated his position, which is the right position from a legal perspective. Um, and so we would hold our vote as to the content of the letter, and then um, and then Mark will just let us know if that is a non-binding vote. Um, then we'll have this on the topic for the agenda for next month. If it is uh, if it is a vote that qualifies, then um, then I will draft the letter and and we'll just have business as normal. But we want to make sure that we are are in compliance with all of the rules. Okay, so in terms of the overall content, there are a number of questions that we simply don't um, have the answers to, just because of where we where we are in the the staging of this. But uh, basically, in terms of comments and questions, items we heard, uh, this the site is going to be clearing, like the proposal is to clear the the forest um, to put in the the proposed development, uh, and it is to improve the visibility of this historic. Um, the right now current historic building that is that is recognized historic by the county, but that's being challenged by the applicant. Uh, so we don't have any conclusion right now in terms of which way that falls from the committee. Um, we can say that right now, per our understanding, this does fall under the historic mixed use by current zoning rules, and this is a permitted use. But we can't uh, we don't have clarity right now to, to weigh in on the lines to, to understand the full ramifications of, of that. Um, I will put in the fact that the committee asked about uh, incorporating solar um, uh, for the building, and that is under consideration. Uh, I could tack on their electric vehicle chargers. Sure. <laughs> I'm going to ask this for Martin, that it's Martin's request, not the committee, please. Thank you. <laughs> hey, by the way, I, I found this cool article. I'm going to see it here. Uh, it's in uh, Fine Home Building Magazine. It's uh, all about charging. Just thought you brought it up, Jason. And uh, well, can we do that in new business? Yeah, sure, sure. Okay. All right. So um, uh, I do want to mention about the the sidewalk because I think that the so the so basically uh, Stuart and Terry, you brought up the desire to have this be um, walkable for any of your any of the employees to be able to walk into the site. I, I'm gonna. I would like to mention about um, inclusion of an interior sidewalk to make it actually walkable versus having um, employees walk on the street with the traffic. Uh, and that there are, let's see, there are no modifications, but there are some some potential proffers being thought about, which are um, uh, more outdoor activities, increased green space, and the forest conservation uh, structures. But but at this point, I'm not. I, I I would defer to the committee, but I'm not certain we could. Um, I I don't I don't know how far I want to say. Like, do we believe that this meets the intent and vision of the master plan? Would we recommend that the that after some of these bigger questions get answered with the county as to exactly how this project is going to appear, that we would we would request a revisit with the committee to get an update? Um, all of that has been stuff uh, items that we've done in the past as a committee. Whenever there are a lot of unanswered questions, um, and that that's solely with like we can, we can do that. Yeah, I think there's too many unanswered questions at this point. So, yeah. and I, one of the things, just, just, I think we've addressed all those questions. To to say they're unanswered, they're up in the air. I would agree with that. But we are proposing to separate that property, whether it's historic or not. That's what we've done according to the plan. Um, we don't have a problem putting sidewalks on. The questions, and it's interesting when when you look through all those items and you're trying to see whether it meets the intent of the the plan. A lot of those items are for the county, and not necessary for developers. You know, so you know we pick and choose through. So the sidewalk isn't a big deal, um, and it's not going to make a difference whether this is approved or not. If they want the sidewalk, we're going to put it there. If they don't want the sidewalk, we're not going to put it there. Um, your specimen tree, we're going to try to save it. End the story. I mean, it's not even up in the air. We're, we're going to save the tree. And if for some reason that doesn't happen, then obviously we'll have to come back. So I'm not sure I agree with there's a lot of questions up so, in the air. With that, that's fair. Right. That's poor warning on my part. Yeah. You know, with regards to saying that, you know, this plan is something that we like, you know, it, it, I think that that's the difference with just the semantics of how to say it. Right. So um, there are we the committee understands there's currently a disagreement of opinion 
between the Historic Office of Planning and Zoning and the developer regarding uh, the historic nature of the property. And I do think that the committee would like to know the resolution of that. And that we intend so, to do because it will affect this particular plan. And then if right. it affects it, we'll come back more than just sidewalks. We'll come back. But, um, we, you know, we'd love to put sidewalks on, but we may be told we can't. And, you know, that's up in the air, but that has nothing to do with whether the plan should be recommended for approval or not. That's all. I'm just saying these things up in the air don't seem to be things that should impede the committee giving um, a validation of the plan. Um, uh, you know, th this is the plan. The only thing that's going to change is a sidewalk is going to be going to be added on to Odenden Road or not. And that, that we don't have control of. And that's one of the reasons why I really wanted to talk to, I talked to Mark and I've talked to Jason about having somebody actually from planning and zoning being here, not long range planning. So that maybe some of these questions could be could be at least discussed for the committee, but from somebody with the county. So um, with that said, like I said, does the pro project meet what the intent is, creating employment, jobs, development around the train station? That's the bottom line. These other little things are really insignificant as to whether the project works or not. They, they really are because they're not our decision. They're the county's decision. Yes, you have to put a sidewalk in. No, we don't want it. It's a byway. So th that's my 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 view, so to speak. I do think that the county has a valid point, and that if the the discussions with the historic, um, like with the historic office, are change like say where this this lot goes or how much of the forest mm -hmm. should be removed to maintain the historic property Th those are material changes to this property or to this proposed plan uh, or potentially material changes which which would mean that the that yes the 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 review that the committee is performing now would not really be able to stand it would be it would be obsolete well I don't think there's a project that comes in that the committee reviews that doesn't change, period. You know, and it doesn't always come back to the committee, to be honest with you. Because mm -hmm. really, honestly, the county doesn't care. Okay, what we say. So, so, you know, I, this is what we're proposing. I think you're getting too caught up on that lot one. I really, really do too much of attention is put to that. If it's historic, we have done what we feel we need to do based on subdividing a lot for historic property. That's what we're proposing. That's what we're proposing. If it turns out it's not historic, it doesn't change. It doesn't mm -hmm. change. This is what we're proposing. And once we submit it to the county, which we have, and we get all the comments back, then we'll know more. And that's the case with every project we review. How many times have we review? Um, Academy Yards, how many times? So, you know, you say, yeah, we like the plan, we're, we're for the project, and then all of a sudden they decide and they're not doing structured parking, they did different, they come back, okay, we like this plan, we move it on. That's what we'll have to do if something great changes, but this is what we're proposing. If it's a store, that's what we're proposing, and the building, that's what we're proposing for the second lot, and then the third lot is going to remain the same. So, so I would propose for the committee that <clears throat> we defer to the county in terms of these historic discussions. That the that the committee is not like we're we're not experts in the rules and and structure for um, for how historic properties are evaluated, but the county is, and so I would. I would defer that decision. And I, I would write that in the letter is what I would propose is that we, yeah, and that's fine. He's not taking a stance on that because we, we accept the County is the expert here and, and the County is the judge uh, should be the judge. Would be my proposal for that aspect of this. Now, in terms of the overall vision yet, yeah, uh, Stuart brought up all of the items that were on that final page, as well as the references to the specific sections. And so the question would be, is do we feel that the, the items that they have, listed off in this proposal meet the intent and vision of the master plan.
sentence. I don't know that there's an objection, Jason. Uh, I think that it's addressed. Those that are addressed. Okay, so I would need a motion to indicate such in the letter. Um, well, I was answering your question. So what kind of motion looking for? So the key is um, the, the letter topic basically is all those, the different items listing out how it meets the vision. But the, the key is we either say it either does or does not meet the vision and intent of the master plan. And yeah, that's the one question before the committee. I will also include the, the deference to the to the county's experts regarding the, the discussions about the a property lot one and um, uh, mention the sidewalk and solar and the the acknowledgement that that at this point no modifications were requested. If but we want to go with that statement, I can make the motion. Well, but it comes down to, do we feel that this does or does not meet the intent of the master plan? That's that's the question that is open that it has to be motioned one way or the other. Yeah, but you mentioned the sidewalks and everything else as part of that. Yep. So I'm not sure if you're trying to include that or not. Right. So all of those items will be in. The motion will be for does mm -hmm. or does not meet the intent of the master plan. All those other things will be in either way. I make a motion that it meets the intent of the master plan. Yeah. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay, Eric, thank you. Thanks, Eric. Okay, so the motion on the table is that this proposal does meet the intent of the master plan, listing off the items that were provided uh, across one, two, three, four sections of the objectives of the master plan. The content would also include the aforementioned items about deference, solar, sidewalks, um, and the and no modifications. Uh, any other discussion items for the letter? Okay, hearing none. Um, all right, so there are five of us present. So um, uh, time for the vote. So all in favor of the content of the letter, raise your hand or say aye. Two. Uh, Brenda? Brenda, you disappeared. Yes, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. No, it's it's just that it's a certain time and I have I call my mother every day between quarter of <laughs> and nine o'clock. <laughs> so, Tell her we like, said hello. <laughs> Say hi and for when me. You, when you have a mother who's 102, you call Oh, her. my goodness. Oh, oh my okay. goodness. Um, I, I do need you to vote, though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I vote. <laughs> I'm here. All right. So in favor, uh, Stuart, I need your I'll order. recuse myself. Okay. Yeah. Appreciate it. All right. And so in favor. Okay. So by record, the uh, it was is four in favor and one abstention. Okay. All right, thank you. And then, uh, Mark, just let me know how uh, if, if that vote stands, or if it is something that we'll just have to yeah. to retake. We'll have to recap at the next meeting and retake. Yep, we'll do. All right, thank you, committee members. I appreciate it, really. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah, and you can go ahead and stop broadcasting. Thanks, Terry. Uh, Terry. Okay. Thank you. you know what? I was having a big problem here because I kept getting low bandwidth, and I don't know what's on my end or where. You know, and I got cut off earlier. So I just wanted to let you know, uh, Jason. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. Thanks. Thanks, Brenda. Okay. So um, we're in the advocacy and new business. So Martin, you had one item for new business? Yeah. I was just responding to um, Stuart's comment about chargers. We talked about this, I think, last meeting or before. You probably can't see this. Uh, yeah, right. we can't see it, Martin. You disappear with it. Yeah, I disappear with it. <laughs> It's an article uh, that was in uh, Fine Home Building, the April, May 2024 issue. Uh, I subscribe to this magazine. It's a pretty good magazine, well, well read. Uh, there's a big article on various charging mechanisms, um, you know, requirements for voltage and things. It's actually designed for homes. 
but they do mention, uh, remember I mentioned uh, induction charging where you wouldn't need to plug it in. So there are three, I think three manufacturers they mentioned here of the new new approach to charging, which would dispense with the with the cable itself. Um, Wytricity is one, plugless power, and Hevo, and there are other ones. And this technology is just like your phone when you put your phone on your wireless charger. It's the same principle. Um, so I just want to make that uh, available, that information available to the committee since we kind of talked about it a time ago. Okay. Thanks, Martin. Is there, if there's a way to get a digital copy or like some I type can, of uh, reference, that'd be great. I can scan it and send it to the team, send it to you. Okay. Tesla fired their char entire charging program staff today. High-speed charging staff. So. Okay. Sorry, sir. Yeah, 100% fired them all. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, so... Yeah, that is true. Um, so one item of new business I did want to talk about. So a status from the subcommittee. Um, so Abigail, I have been going back and forth and um, uh, I, I sent her questions of uh, what I thought we could talk about. She, she responded back, sent some other suggestions for different businesses. And then um, uh, after talking through it, um, started thinking about, well, who is the audience? And so the the problem is, uh, as, as, as you may have thought, like, not everybody in a, a business is going to be equal to be able to respond to any questions about the Odenton vision. And so um, that's, I think, one of the bigger stumbling blocks that we get still working through is how to understand when it's appropriate to, to talk and when it isn't, because basically just asking a general employee of a business what they think about inclusion in Odenton probably isn't going to get the same answer as, say, from the business owner itself, himself or herself. And so um, how to actually to tackle that, because... Um, for example, as you, uh, as, as we, let's look at the, the Taco Bell. If we went to that Taco Bell and asked the odds of the actual owner being there near zero, it's all going to be employees. Go to Ferguson, on the other hand, the owner is there because it's a, it's a local business. So that, that really does, does matter. So that's, those are things that we're, we're going back and forth on. So that's the status I have for, uh, for new business. Um, the other item I have then mm -hmm. is, uh, in terms of, trying to evaluate as you, as you saw today in terms of uh um trying to figure out like how do we how do we better organize the meetings like we're running a bit behind I apologize uh but trying to figure out is there a way that we can at least try and do a little bit of prediction of of how to move things along that's I'm, I'm experimenting trying to figure that out so so Mark one of the things I was thinking if there's carrots we can offer that says hey if we can provide a more structured way of here's what the committee is is looking for in terms of of input we have the community meeting which has certain requirements they have to meet then there's the OTC pieces that of of what they have to meet. Figure out how to do that in a time frame, going through the the vision points to make sure that we address that question since that's part of the letter now that we have to address. And then figure out how do we how do we arrange it such that the projects we can get through faster, get earlier, so we have reserve more time, so we don't end up basically where we're crushing the second project into a small amount of time. So I think that's how do we offer carrots like that to the developers? I think is important, um, and so. So definitely open to ideas for how we can do that um, to try and better structure the, the meetings to keep moving forward. Um, as well, then, in terms of the questions, I think this has been a great exercise in, in understanding. So if there's a way that we can provide examples to the developers to say, like, hey, here's here's uh, structures of how to answer the vision question that that the, that work for the committee. Um, here's other ways that are less good, but, but try and point people toward um, uh optimal ways to, to answer that question, I think, is also helpful. Since these are a matter of public record, I don't see why providing examples isn't, wouldn't be allowed. So just some thoughts. Uh, anybody else have any new business? I do. I mean, some thoughts on that is um, we got to be careful we are not a chamber. Okay. Right. We are reviewing projects that come to us. That is it. And there's some suggestions on some things that are chamber activities which are all wonderful, but they need to be done when it's at a chamber and not at this committee level. And that in itself will help us move the meetings forward, making sure that we're spending time on the right issues. And I think uh, also though, Stuart, I mean, our role is to look for projects that meet. The no, no. we don't look for projects. They're, they look for us, they come to us. Well, we don't look for projects. I'm saying we, our job is to look at the projects that are presented to us. Correct. To see, does it meet the mission of 
of the of the plan. Correct. That's it. Yeah. But not going on out, create chamber like committees and trying to advocate. That's not what we're for. And and again, they're all noble. I'm not disagreeing with any of them, but there's no audience for doing that. And it doesn't help us. Um, it doesn't help us review a project. It, re it really doesn't. And if you get a project that you think you need community input, the community is invited here. They have input. You know, that's it. I, I mean, I, you know, that will help us move the thing forward. Also, I'm, just, I'm sorry, sir. I'm just trying to understand what you're what you're objecting to. Maybe we agree, but I'm not sure I understand what you're asking. Yeah, there's just been some suggestions by committee members on activities that are more chamber related, and in discussing them and taking that time to do it when they're not our purview. What do you, what do you mean chamber related? Sorry, Stuart. Mm. Um, getting a committee together to go visit businesses and see what they want. Oh, uh, okay. It's not what we're about, man. We don't go. People come to us. Mm -hmm. So and the only go is to go to a site to visit that somebody's coming to us. That's all. Yeah, so the committee can't actually do that. That would violate the Open Meetings Act. So with that said, um, May 2007, my assistant found this. Notes from the Odin Town Center Committee, May 2007, okay? Projects in Odin Town Center area. Of 18 projects on deck at the county, one is completed, no one else has a shovel in the ground. I would say that now, um, 17 years later, it's the same thing. How many projects have we reviewed? There's one shovel in the ground, the apartments, which is a great thing. It's a great thing. Yeah. Okay, that's what we need to be advocating for. Okay, we're spending our time here at these meetings and nothing's getting built. Nothing. And the plan's part of the reason. That's one reason. Okay, and I, 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 I you know, I'm, I'm not going to say what the other ones are. I have problems. I don't think this, I don't think this committee is, is holding that up. I think the committee is fulfilling its responsibility to review these projects as they come to us. So I agree. I'm not saying we're holding them up at all. I don't think this committee yeah. is at all. Yeah, I think it's a good committee too. I think it, you know, brings the community together to look at these projects and has a voice in it. So I think that's good, but I don't think we hold it up. It's somewhere else Stuart, that the problem lies, perhaps. It, it is it is the interpretation of the plan by planning and zoning. Mm -hmm. they, they will not be flexible on most things where flexibility is built into the project. This committee recognizes, okay, that some things in the Odin and Talent Center plan, it, it's a plan for everybody and every property is different. And we have seen that. And I think this committee has done a really good job recognizing that. I'll give an example. The Sheets did a great job recognizing that it's bound by four streets and you can't possibly, okay? County disagrees at this point. I well, talked with you. the owners of the sheets called me. What can I do? Right. But so I read the documents from on the sheets. That's that's a good example because I brought that up last time and, and Mark forwarded those documents. So I appreciate the, the link on that. The disagreement was on a specimen tree. It wasn't actually a disagreement about the streets. I don't know if we didn't, if, so this is where like, I'll fully admit, I don't know at what points things get reviewed right now the disagreement is not actually the the layout it was about the removal of specimen trees mm -hmm. is where the rejection is that's so I, I think it's we have to be careful we we make sure that whenever we say like well the project is stalled it may not be stalled based upon the committee saying we recommend this move forward because of this it could be stalled because of something that actually mm -hmm. wasn't part of our committee recommendation at all and I'm not saying that. I'm not saying the committee at all is holding it up. I'm saying that we're reviewing these projects. We're giving our interpretation and understanding, okay, what the situation is and what's being requested of the developer. And we're doing a really good job of that, presenting it to the county and presenting whether we support it or not. Okay, we do a great job in doing that. The county seems to interpret it differently. That's what I'm going to say. And their interpretation is at odds a lot of times with what we are intending to do. And that's letting the county know that based on this committee and based on what we um, interpret of the Odin Town Center plan and how it fits in and how it needs to be cited, that we accept the changes. 
and we're okay with that. And then it goes to the county, and a lot of times it's rejected. Well, the problem, too, is that, you know, um, small changes across many projects could be a big change in the end. Let's say you never did save the specimen trees. And all the projects we saw, we said, okay, we'll let that go. And the next one go, the next one go. So if you look at the overall community as a whole, you've lost a lot of specimen trees and a lot of things maybe that you didn't realize you're doing on a project by project basis. It might be planning and zoning is looking at it that way because it is in the plan to, to save those kinds of trees. So if we say, well, don't worry about it, why would they say don't worry about it? So I think there's a fine line here, or maybe a fuzzy line about what we say uh, versus what the plan says. Plan says, conserve these specimen trees. We say, not this time. <laughs> so it, it's, but you can't say it every time. If you said every time, you wouldn't have any specimen trees. We just said we're going to save one. So in the case yeah, of- Yeah, yeah, you said you're going to save one. Let's use, yeah, let's use the sheets as an example. And we agreed that in that situation, okay, we're going to, we're going to do away. And there's a process with the county when you take a specimen tree. I just got a fee. I'm getting a feedback. It was $17,000 fee from the county for one tree to take it down. And it was another $15,000 fee for reforestation. $32,000 to take down a tree. But I, mean, I think you got to look at this sort in a bigger context. It's uh, not just one. It's if you keep repeating this, it gets to be a problem, right? Yeah, I, I Martin, I understand that. And, and we're, you know, the apartment complex, we forced them to save a tree. It cost them $50,000, but they did it. And we're going to save the tree over here. We're going to do it. But as you just said, there's some cases where, there's a flexibility and mm -hmm. the project's worthy of the tree coming down. They're going to mitigate the fact that the tree came down and, 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 and we move forward and some of those, you know, in that particular project. And Let me just, here it, just for it, a second. I, yeah, Mark. Um, two things, right. Is I do want to make clear that we have a plan, which is visionary. And in chapter three, there are just design guidelines or design requirements all the other requirements have now been migrated over to the code. So it, it's it's a minor difference, but in planning and zoning, it's a, it's a big thing because you have a plan, the master plan, which is this policy document, and then you have the code, which is regulatory. So just want to keep that, that separate. Appreciate um, that. And then the, the second point I want to make is that planning and zoning I don't want to speak for our development division, but they're not, we don't reject plans. We, we provide letters back to the developer indicating where the project is not necessarily meeting certain requirements in the code. And then the applicant has the opportunity to respond to that and resubmit the application to make those corrections. So again, is I have on my agenda here that we want to invite somebody in from our development division to explain what the process is. We usually have them come in every few years or so. Um, but again, is it is this iterative process and there are those conversations that can happen with the applicant and the county to, to clarify different interpretations or you know, what is needed for a project to be successful. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. Um, but again, is I think we, sh it, it would be a good idea to have our development division come in to explain that process a little bit more. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I mean, it's, um, it, it, it's at what point, um, it's at what point is there flexibility shown from the county level on some of these things where modifications and bonus programs? Here, here's the other thing it says on here um, from 2007. Um, bringing the Nevermore property into the core, allowing for more flexible development. County has no way to deal with bonus eligib uh, eligibility actions incentives. This is what was said in 2007. Yeah, again, I think we could have a so. whole three hour meeting to discuss flexibility. <laughs> what, what I'll say here is that 
there is flexibility going through the modification process, going through the incentive process or pro program um, if you need relief, because there is an understanding that not all these requirements are going to fit each one, each project the same way. And, and yeah, we understand that yeah. not all modifications are bad or, or Mark, and I wish you could be vocal on that when it needs to be. We need so. your support on some of these projects. Okay. That you sit here and go through, you have intimate knowledge of the plan itself and exactly what we're talking about. And I just think it's important um, that 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 there is somebody su supportive in the county for what we are trying to do here, and, and that's you. Yeah, yeah I think, I think each project is different, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's why proffers are important, is because if if there's a certain if you're you know again this sort of threshold of relief that you're you need for a project, and if it's at the disadvantage of a you know the community then the proffer should sort of make up that community benefit. So again, so I, I'd like, yeah, I don't know if we can tell. I'd, like, I'd like to be able to move on because Chad has an announcement. And I think that this is a good conversation that we should have with a presentation from the development order planning and zoning. So I think, I think we could have a more robust discussion there. There's uh, a lot to talk about with regard to the trees as well, I think. So at some point. Right. Yeah. But I, I do think that, that, like the the it's a it's a good healthy conversation um that i would like to have us have um at a, at a coming meeting when we can get that scheduled if that's uh, okay okay chad hey evening everybody i do not want to take a ton of time i just wanted to as a follow-up to our meeting with colonel sap there was the discussion about the odenton park development and I just wanted to let you know that for so for the defense infrastructure program that we talked about, Anne Arundel County submitted that as one of the projects. And that is the project that Fort Meade is going to sponsor. And that is basically, if I understood it correctly, is to uh, we put for the package to get federal funds for the planning and the the actual official um the word is escaping me right now, but design and everything of the park with the spacing. And that had to come that it had to come with a project that had some money tied to it. So I just want to make sure that you all know that that was a priority that Colonel Sapp certainly took from his presentation here. And when that showed up from the county, that was our absolute number one. Hey, that's the project we want to endorse. That's and what awesome. would that be? Say, so, uh, can you repeat that, Martin? Yeah, just asking why, Chad, it is the project of choice for you. Well, it meets a couple of our our mission intents. So the whole point behind the defense infrastructure program is to find community based projects that will support the military community as well. Um, there was a couple of there's Anne Arundel County provided us like. 16 projects to choose from we narrowed it down to three there was a couple of sidewalk projects along odenton road and then there was a community park and out of those projects the community park seemed to be the one that a we got some positive feedback from community something they wanted and that's certainly something that our employees through feedback wanting some more quality of life space in and around odenton um seem to fit with what we're doing with that being said, this is an annual project. So I'm assuming as more shovel ready projects come through the pipeline, this is our second year um, being involved in this program, but it's also something that we we plan on pushing and encouraging Anne Arundel County to submit a project every year. So the county submits the project for the federal funding, but as the sponsoring military installation, we can only endorse one per year. That can change every year based on where funding goes and things of that nature. I just wanted to announce that we came to an agreement based off what the county provided, that that was the project that Fort Meade chose to sponsor based off of what the county was looking to do and had put funding aside for. Well, thanks, thanks for the insight. Chad. I appreciate that. Yeah, thank Colonel Sapp for us as well. Yes. Will do. Mark, yeah, what's the process? Can you update us in the park? Real quick, 
Well, I, before we let Chad go, um, uh, so Chad, so the process is that the uh, fort sponsors it. I'm assuming that goes to the mix of all of the other sponsored projects from all of the other military installations. And so is there a decision committee at the Pentagon that actually would review and determine which ones actually get the federal funding? There is. And there's a cut line for um, how much projects can get. It can vary. So, for example, like Mead High got $100 million as part of this project years ago. Um, but it will, it does compete. The good thing is, is that the federal budget has more money now allocated. So now it's, I don't have the exact figure, but it's somewhere between 50 and $75 million allocated for projects that it distributes throughout the United States. It's really for CONUS projects. Um, but the key part of that is to make sure that the county and the state kick in funds too. So that's why the project have to be shovel ready. Um, but we do get guidance from the Department of Defense on projects that compete better in front of those panels. So things that get to quality of life and infrastructure, water, you know, pipes and things of that nature, those tend to score higher than others because those end up being the needs of what either the workforce needs or it ties directly to mission capability. When is a decision is there a number? Is there a dollar number? Well, the the Department of Defense, from my understanding, so the county will submit the grant and they'll put through you know, how much money is set aside for it, how much they're looking for. And from my understanding, and this is not gospel, that based off of that, the Department of Defense will look at their budget and they'll distribute as needed or what they have per project. So I'm guessing if it works like most other panels, you know, the idea is to spread the money out as equitably as possible and as far as possible so that communities feel the support from their local military installation. But it's also, at least from what we've seen, it is at least substantial enough to move projects significantly forward. So they do not, the Department of Defense is not looking to do a drop in the bucket. Honestly, they're looking in to take, you know, the requirement is that the counties provide at least 25% of any project that is at least forwarded up. DOD would like to, provide the rest of the 75 percent but more likely than not it's at minimum matching to make sure that it does move the project forward enough to get closer to com com completion well how much because obviously the dod doesn't want to spend money on a project that doesn't get done so so chad how much uh control would dod then expect on a project if they contribute 75 percent honestly a great question from what I've seen, and because it is a county and state project, it's really very little. So I will. the only example we have right now is the Mead High School project. And that is one of the larger projects. Like I said, it's $100 million out of about a $125 million project. They do come by to get status checks. They do, but, you know, setting the contractor, building out the construction schedule, making sure the work is on progress that has all been handled by the county and public school the dod does have to come in on a routine basis to make sure that the money is being spent but like i said that's usually about 20 twice a year they come in and just to get basically a status update of what's happening with the money but i have not seen in my limited experience uh them being overbearing in any way they give the money for a project that the county or the jurisdiction needs to do, and they seem to let the jurisdiction do the work of, you know, handling the contracting and all the legwork of getting it done. They're really just trying to provide extra money to help because they know it's supposed it is going to help uh, the military community in one way or another. Thanks, Chad. That's great news, Chad. As Mark, any update on that part? I know, but the budget is going to be released tomorrow. Okay. So, um, you know, I can still provide an update, but the budget then 
you know, will also give some indication as to how the project will move forward in the future. And again, it's just released tomorrow. It's not voted on until, you know, a few more council meetings. So, and, and is the rails and trails project under construction? Do you know? What is the rails and trails? The rails and trail is a trail along, um, God, what is the road? Um, what's the, I can't think of the road. The road that you take, you hit 32 from, um, from Sappington Station. You take a right, what the hell's the name of that road? Is a trail out there? There's a tr yeah. There's are a. Tr are you talking about the one that's going to go up to BWI? Correct. Um, I don't, and I thought okay. the alignment was going to be along Maryland One Seventy. No, there's one that's back. Um, I'm I'm actually looking at the map right now. I, I don't want to take everybody's time. We've been here. Burns Crossing. That's oh, the Burns. route. Okay. Okay. We can get an update. Uh, right. Jason, I had just one quick update. The Region Five. Uh, SAC applications, SAC standing for Stakeholder Advisory Committee, um, those applications become available uh, actually in two and a half hours. If you want to stay up and be one of the first ones to volunteer to serve on a committee just like this. Uh, but like I said, for Region 5, they'll be developing a plan just like the Odenton Town Center Master Plan, as well as uh, provide recommendations for uh, comprehensive zoning. So that's the added element. So. If you're looking to, if you've got more free time on your hands, um, uh, check that out. Otherwise, you can still stay involved uh, if you go to aacounty.org forward slash region five. Uh, there are opportunities just to uh, provide some feedback through some simple surveys, and we'll provide, we'll be pushing out information over the next two years uh, for public feedback. Or if you just want to see what's happening, check out that website. I'll, I'll send that um, through an email later. Um, but just wanted to make that announcement. We'll also, um, in case no one here wants to pull double duty for uh, committees, we will be providing updates periodically at this meeting about what's going on in Region 5, just so that you all are involved and maybe want to provide some feedback back to the Region 5 Stakeholder Advisory Committee. So, Is it possible, like, is it possible, like, for we to have a representative on that committee so we could we could do we talked about this actually just the other day um we could do some type of ex officio representative um during that meeting we we actually noted that we just want to be mindful of everybody's time so if somebody wants to volunteer we can we can talk about that more um but we really just landed on we office planning and zoning can provide the updates in this meeting we we can keep talking about it but yeah i mean i'd probably volunteer just because it's my business yeah. more than anything so to yeah. be to know i would probably be involved anyway there's your volunteer <laughs> so okay yeah. thanks brenda <laughs> yeah let, let's talk about this some more but i, I appreciate <laughs> you you stepping up yeah i think we would need to to Probably, if it was to be like an ex officio representative of the OTCAC, I would think that would need to have a bit more. Um, yeah. We'd have to think through that versus just straight volunteer. Yeah. We, we didn't think that there would be any suck. I mean, um, volunteers. <laughs> Mark, Mark, thank you. Thank you for being real there. <laughs> All right. Any other new business from the committee? Okay. Uh, now we're at general public comment. Any members of the public? You, we have four here who are still in attendance who've lasted this long so far. Uh, does anyone have any, anything you want to talk about? If so, just raise your hand so we, uh, we know to promote you to a speaking position. Come on, Jerry. You got to have something. All right, Jerry. Uh, no, Stuart, I don't have anything. That's all I Thank have. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well played. Motion to adjourn. Yes. All second. right, there's a motion. There's a second. <laughs> all right, any objection to adjourning? Seeing none, we stand adjourned at 931. Thank you, everyone.
Okay. okay. Thanks.